you've changed And there's a stone inside my head It's getting me in trouble, baby And I can't break away I thought that I could keep it low Take it easy, take it slow gentlemen to the upsurge minor league playoffs we are here with one of the quarterfinal matchups in the uml playoffs as i just said my name is orbital i am joined here by guster posey how are you doing today guster doing good a little mad because i don't have a valorant drop yet but just gotta be patient <laughs> i guess listen listen it's probably worse than trying to play the lottery so i mean i'm not <laughs> i'm not even worried about it because we have uh, a rematch, pretty much, of a fantastic set of teams here. Omega Team Resistance, Omega Gaming Resistance, I'm very sorry, versus World Class Full Send. Both these guys uh, winning their best, uh, the round of 16 matches and coming up once again against each other. Uh, gonna be a fantastic matchup in this best of three. Yeah, and the last time you and I actually cast together was when they met each other in the regular season back in mid March. and. That was quite the exciting series. We had base races with inhibitors respawning. We had all sorts of crazy shenanigans going on. So we'll see what these teams have in store for us here as we get into quarterfinals, which uh, for the viewers are best of three. Best of five start next week with the semifinals. So just another best of three between these two teams right here. And, you know, we'll see exactly what they decide to ban as the Zack ban comes out because, you know, Zack is just really good right now. And if you give a team Zack, they have all the engage and tankiness they can need. And you can even play him support. Yeah, you really can. It's also been played top as a counter to the set at points. Uh, with the Conqueror, he actually outputs quite a bit of decent damage. Even as a full tank, his ratios are pretty nutty. Uh, the card that's banned away as well. So um, <clears throat> Omega Gaming. Uh, resistance really targeting that jungle role against yasa yeah and countering back with the gragas pick we did see super mark uh last time around have pretty good performances on both the olaf as well as the rek'sai in the regular season while the rek'sai didn't actually like hard carry the game did put out a lot of work and just gonna lock right in with the Olaf. So very early game oriented here. Olaf does scale pretty well, especially now that Death Dance builds out of Aegis, gives you actual tank stats as well as everything else that Death, Death Dance did. Olaf can get pretty disgusting later on, but countering that is Gangplank and Braum. So going for a bit of late game is world-class full send. And you know, is game one. So these guys are just kind of <laughs> putting some feelers out, doing some things. Yeah, I mean, if the uh, if the TSM series has taught me anything, it's don't bank on an Olaf late game. Dear, dear <laughs> Lord, Maya. Uh, sorry about that for anyone that's currently still waiting to watch the game or, you know, watch the series. But again, Olaf, as you said, he does have a little bit better mid game. He used to be just a hard early to mid. Now he does have that little late uh, mid game resistance where you can kind of do a little extra damage. However, not great. Uh, we do see the Gangplank and Braum and the Kalista Galio to actually match it and the Lucian immediately picked up Braum and Lucian, one of the premier bottom lanes that has always plagued solo queue and competitive gaming alike. 
Yeah, definitely. It's as simple as getting a brown passive on someone, combining that with Lucian, should be able to proc it pretty instantly afterward. But the Callista Galio is interesting because Callista top is a thing. Uh, Callista mid can technically be a thing as well, and Galio can still be played as support. So we'll have to see where those two actually end up. That could be the bottom lane for Omega Resistance, or it could be top mid. You, you don't know when when these champions like Callista and Vayne are able to be played in solo lanes. You never know where these things are going to go. I mean, yes and no. The only reason I say that is because the Callista top, you would need someone that can act actively be thrown in on the jungle side. So that's usually your, your go-to partner. However, Olaf's Ragnarok, I think, completely negates the Fates call. So that would actually be a really bad matchup uh, for the top and jungle. So that is, that is my thought say, process I right there. Can't say so. I've ever played that lane when Callisto is solely a bottom laner. So I, I don't know how Ragnarok interacts with yeah. you, but I, I imagine you're right. The only reason I say that is because I've seen an Olaf try and hit Blast Clone while Ragnarok yeah. King, so it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Anyway, getting <laughs> onto the rest of them, we do see the LeBlanc and Cassiopeia fanned out, which does mean the Ari uh, pickup here. However, Syndra is still available. So it does look like World Class Wolf and are assuming the Galio is in that mid lane. Yeah, oh, and Irelia getting oh. picked up instead of that Camille pickup. And Irelia, you know, she's very, very strong, especially now with the Blade of the Rune King changes. A lot of Irelia players don't even build Trinity Force. They just go uh, Blade of the Rune King and then either Wit's End or Black Cleaver or even Trinity Force afterwards. But Blade of the Rune King doing that 12% uh on hit is just crazy and like you said syndra still available still just the stalwart presence in the mid lane still able to do just about everything you could need from a mid laner but the last pick from road class full send is very interesting pulling out the kindred and i really like playing kindred in the jungle with a brahm support because now you have two ranged 80 carries with which you can proc the brahm passive very easily Especially in a situation like with Callista, where as soon as you get slowed on Callista, you're like half a champion because it not only slows down your movement speed, but when your movement speed gets slowed as Callista, you just feel so sluggish and you can't attack as fast because you have to complete your jump with each auto attack if you're trying to move. So feels bad, but the Kindred can go really, really well or really, really badly into Olaf. It, it depends on how much Olaf can get done in the early game. I also have some qualms, uh, you know, I don't like always getting really deep into the analytics as, you know, as a player, play is not really my job, but my one concern is the fact that World Class Fulsen have essentially painted a target on the ground with the Kindred Ultimate, the Lancer Spite. Uh, when you have a Galio on the other side, the Lancer Spite, you usually want to stay inside of it. However, that allows the enemy team maybe about 2.5 to 3 seconds of prep time if they wanted to set up a wombo combo, right? So <laughs> I am a little bit worried about picking up that Kindred instead of, uh, you know, something a little bit tankier even, like the Sejuani that is able to engage from far away. And not only that, stifle any massive, you know, cannon barrage that Omega Gaming Resistance might want to throw at them. Yeah, and that's kind of, it seems like that is World Class's kind of goal here, is they drafted champions with a lot of mobility aside from Gangplank, who just gets, you know, his movement speed when he pops the barrels. So the other four champions have ways to maneuver themselves around a fight. So it looks like they're trying to just, you know, do the orb walking, get the kiting down and just overwhelm uh, Omega by, oh, you use Galio, well, we'll just all dash out of it. And now you can't do a whole lot. Like that, that's how they're gonna have to end up playing this game. And it could go incredibly badly because, like, like you were talking about, Lancer Spite is a big old target on the ground for the Galio to aim at. Syndra stun, Irelia stun, and ultimate. Callista throwing people in, and then there's always Olaf if he gets fed. Fed. Um, pretty much everyone on the side of World Class Full Send is a, a juicy target for Olaf. There's yeah. not really a tank there that can absorb <laughs> everything that Olaf can do. Yeah, just getting run down uh, with a giant guy just rushing at you with axes is never fun. Uh, <laughs> it is one of the most painful experiences. Uh, I am interested to see if Olaf actually decides to go the Ghost instead of the Flash, as there's not really much impeding his running progress, and it would also allow him to stick on some of these squishies a little bit better. 
Uh, but we'll have to see what summoners he does take in that jungle role. Uh, but I do want to turn your attention to the top lane. As you were saying, uh, Aurelia mid is usually where we see Aurelia go, you know, with the Blade of the Rune King changes. However, in this top lane matchup, do you think it's a little bit easier for the Aurelia? Or do you think, you know, uh, Primer might have a little easier time with the gameplay? Uh, overall, it, it seems like Aurelia should have pretty good about level three to six ish because gangplank early on until i really has her whole kit aside from her ult available is just gonna play q simulator you know just gonna walk up whenever the parlays off cooldown and smack i in the face with it but once i really has opportunities to fight back she can win some hard trades and even look for kill pressure on a gangplank especially with an olaf as the jungle here that's probably where most of this pressure from the olaf is going to be is on the top side so there's not a lot you can really do to Ari early without a, a good Syndra stun, but if you can land that Syndra stun with an Olaf Axe, you can kill Ari, and then setting up an Irelia to get fed is kind of the, the modus operandi when you draft that champion. You really need to get her going, because if you do not, she doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. Yeah, the Irelia in the top lane, you know, it's going to be interesting, especially since it was the counter pick that they decided to go for. Remember, Gangplank was picked, I believe, very early on in the draft. So I'll be very interested to see how that goes. Syndra is honestly one of my favorite mid lane champions to take against Ari. Um, due to the fact that Ari engages pre-level 6 are pretty telegraphed, uh, you know. Uh, so we'll have to see how that one goes. Lastly, though, I do want to talk about this bot lane, right? These are two very heavy engaged champions. The Galio, obviously, uh, it's one of the more uh, newer support picks. It's been around for a while, but compared to a Braum, I mean... It, it's relatively yeah. new. Do you think this is going to cause some issues in the early game, or do you think this is going to be, you know, swinging one way or the other? Yeah, I mean, Lucian is the premier early game bully, followed pretty closely by champions like Misfortune and the Callista, which is his lane opponent. But the Braum passive can change everything here, because if you get that Braum passive onto Galio and he E's in and tries to taunt, like even if he succeeds in taunting, he's going to get stunned up. And while the aftershock and damage reduction is still there, he is going to have to flash out or try to walk his way out, and Lucian can just chase down from there. So Galio has to be very careful, even post six, because Brom's glacial fissure can just stuff him if he hits it while he's trying to E in, or after he lands with his ultimate, as long as Brom doesn't get knocked up. He has ways to stop Galio from getting in. The hardest thing is just the Fate's Call. And that's probably where... Uh, Omega is going to have their opportunities is to throw in the Gallia with the Fates call before Braum has a chance to react. Yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. But again, we will be going to a short commercial break to, uh, you know, preserve competitive integrity for this uh, quarterfinals matchup here. We want to make sure everything is good and proper. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the first game in this series between Omega Gaming <clears throat> Omega Gaming Resistance and World Class Full Send. Don't go anywhere. Started with a vision. A vision of quality, a vision of uniformity. We took the time to create something familiar yet refreshing. Something with a bit of change. Designed to fit any brand's unique vision.
infinite power. number one between omega gaming resistance and world class full send on the blue side we do have omega gaming resistance with tonzo in the top side super mart in the jungle your nurse in the mid lane and min max and cleave rounding out that bottom lane and for the side of world class full send we have primary in the top lane you saw in the jungle d -Lun mid azudo and ndm8 as the bottom lane in support and you saw eating an axe yeah, a little bit of an axe throw, and this is actually so bad because Supermark, he wants to continue. This is actually so dangerous. Oh, and Ari went charm too. He uh, went the orb, so that does mean Yasa has to flash away. d -Lund. throwing out the Q does mean that there is no stun potentially there. Oh, that's so, oh, that's so unfortunate. Yasa now on the back foot. Yeah, big time. And Kindred's early game already not the best, especially when you're against an Olaf, so... This is already Olaf doing fantastic things so far in this game. And Kindred's coming back up, even with the ward on it. Oh, oh, that's They're, they're so just hiding dangerous. in the bush, so Kindred's in big time trouble here. Oh, no. Oh, are they going to bait it? Oh, they're baiting it so oh, well. Oh, no! He's got nothing! He's got nothing! Omega Gaming Resistance! Get the jump on it, and the flash forward claims first blood. Hanzo picking that one up. Beautiful play from Omega Gaming Resistance. That's one way to get your Aurelia ahead early. <laughs> just to, to give him over first blood. You are not wrong as we see a jump in on this bottom lane. Nice little stun up there from the Kakasa Blows. And now they're going to trade it onto Cleave a little bit. Uh, Kakasa Blows actually not followed up as Azuto actually tried to trade a bit more damage on Minmax. But that is going to be uh, sufficient damage on both ADCs. Yeah, and that was a bit of an interesting trade that Azuto went in for more damage on Minmax instead of just trying to poke down Cleave a little bit too. So, you know, traded a bit of health bars and potions for that, but overall, you know, is over a wave up in CS right now. Uh, Minmax will have an opportunity to catch some of that, but, uh, you know, Lucian doing Lucian things early on. Yeah, now something to also talk about is the fact that there is no heal in the bottom lane. This is something very, very new, I think, in the competitive scene where we actually don't see bottom laners actually taking heal anymore. It's it's pretty much full-on aggression. Yeah, and since Exhaust got its cooldown uh, lowered to match that of Ignite, a lot of people are just like, we don't really need Ignite unless you're against, like, a Swain or something that just has a quick burst of healing that you really need the Grievous Wounds on demand for. Uh, so exhaust is just really good right now and a lot of bottom lanes in uh, amateur and I think I've seen a few in like academy too taking the exhaust instead of heals so just it's really underrated how strong exhaust actually is but Tonzo's having uh having to burn through his corrupting pots just pushing the wave here yeah I don't think he's too worried about taking this poke he knows there's no actual kill pressure uh, so just trying to make sure that he gets the wave push in, get a good back off. Because again, he was sitting on, on I think, the about 700 gold. Yeah, he's over 1,000 in his inventory right now, so... Yeah, due to the first blood gold plus the kill gold, so he did want to go back. He immediately picks up a vamp scepter, so that poke is immediately going to be negated from primer. Yeah, and obviously Gangplank not not trying to, to hardcore win the lane here. I mean, obviously if that happens, that's fantastic, but... You know, Gangplank, you, you just want him to get as much farm as he can, and being down 3 CS at this point is perfectly okay. Yeah, he's very happy about that. We do see Yasa on the bot side trying to get a little bit of something, but again, Minmax and Cleave definitely smelling something out. Uh, you know, don't want to give away too much, and so they play a little bit further back. Don't want to get poked out. And, uh, you know, something to talk about, we have the Cleanse Exhaust on the side of Cleave Minmax, but we have double exhaust from Azuto NDM8, so that is a massive hampering side. Uh, just to give you some thought, if they layer it properly, that is a full six seconds <laughs> of uh, reduced movement speed and reduced damage output from min-max if they, if they stack it properly. Yeah, and exhaust doubly affects Callista, just like I was talking about with the Braum Q slow. Uh, exhaust does much of the same thing to Callista, so... It's basically six second. It's a six second stun, is what it is. We're playing Dota <laughs> this game. Like this Callista is not going to be able to do anything during the exhaust, especially. And they can even stack it 
to where when she goes for rend is when you can start the first one then mm -hmm. she does no damage and then just continue this with the second one and just make Callista just the most useless thing ever so we'll have to see if they can stack it correctly because that, that's something that every once in a while when people take ignite they ignite at the same time with both of them one overwrites the other and you feel bad so definitely true and it's a uh, little bit dangerous to see, however, we do see the draw. Wow, double pink ward as the side of world class full sense say, okay, we are behind a little bit, but we know that uh, we know the jungler and the rest of the laners have backed off, so this is a perfect time to take the first dragon and world class full send claim the first dragon of the series. Yep, and just a solitary mountain, not really going to be super consequential here considering that uh, Gangplank and Braum are going to be the tankiest members of his team. And, you know, only Braum is going to be building some resistances. So just uh, just something to get it going, get it out of the way. Delay soul for the side of Omega. And, you know, Kindred has caught up in some CS. It's 30 to 30 in general CS. So, you know, trying to recover best that she can. But uh, Supermark hasn't really done a whole lot since that first blood. Yeah, he's very happy to dance around as we see in the top lane, Tonzo clearing out that wave and actually dropping Primer. He now is on the wrong side of the lane here. Axe catches him. That's going to be the orange, but it's not going to be enough as Tonzo picks up the second kill of the entire game as we see the bot lane being collapsed on uh, by World Class Full Send. But no, they say we back off, and that is going to be a grab by Yasa as he gets, I think, his first mark of the game at 6 minutes 55 seconds. Yeah, and that definitely feels bad as Kindred, especially since your first increase comes at four marks, and then every three after that you get another one. So, still a long ways to go for Yasaw to get one. And, you know, Kindred feels real bad when you actually have nothing. So, see if he's able to smite steal it. Oh, nope, has Sweeper. Yeah, Sweeper can only see the shadows of people, so it doesn't fully show the champions. Uh, I think Yasa tried to throw Lamb directly into the bush, and that would have given vision, but he was a little bit outside of that, so unfortunate that he couldn't get his own red. Yeah, and tried to vault over into Krugs, and was at that little bit of fat part of the wall where you can't actually jump over, but Tonso does have Vanguard's Edge still, so Primer definitely needs to keep his awareness, keep his wits about him, but... He's doing all right. Yeah, this is actually a heavy camp on the side of Supermark and Tonzo. Primer has been the primary source for the side of Omega Gaming Resistance to pick on, it seems. Uh, definitely trying to hammer him down, keep, and like you said, the Aurelia, trying to get the Aurelia ahead as much as possible, as well as keep the GP down. GPs, when they're fully stacked in mid to late game, that's when they're the most dangerous, and it's just so painful uh, to play against. Yeah, and it looks like Yasal might be making a beeline for these Raptors where his mark spawned, sensing that Supermark is on the Rift Herald. So going for that mark to get his second mark. And Syndra trying to roam down to the bottom lane, it looks like. Yeah, but we see a jump on the top side. Very nice Vanguard's that Just catch everyone. The Blades claim the kill. That's going to be a very easy tower dive, and, and they might just drop the Rift Herald top too. You might as well, you might as well get Tonzo as much gold as you can. He's already 3-0, and oh, sitting on 1,900 gold in his inventory right now. Has a big CS lead on Primer now, and this is where you put all your fruits oh. in the basket, but uh, NDMA got hit by the outplay button. Yeah, and unfortunately the shield was actually turned the wrong way, which does mean that he takes the full brunt of the damage again. It's very directional, and so when it hit the side, you know, Braum's side obviously unprotected, and immediately gets taken down. That also signals the top lane tower going down. So very big wins across the board for a mega gaming resistance right now. Yeah, everything's going their way. And that's what this comp is kind of designed for. You know, the only sort of late game scaling option they have is just for Galio to become a real tank. At least in terms of the actual just looking at the draft. Now that Irelia is fed, she can do whatever she wants at any stage in the game pretty much. Unless something catastrophic happens and she just starts like actually inting or something unless that I mean, happens we, we've seen worse let's let's be honest we've seen <laughs> we, we watched tsm versus versus oh man <laughs> that was a rough one but the, the worst part is i'm a tsm fan and i'm calling him out like that that's so it's so bad yeah oh, it, it no. was rough 
I'm gonna just get in the, trouble on Twitter. I know I am. <laughs> just Zoe things, you know. Bjergsen <laughs> single-handedly saving the series, you know. Oh, oh man, oh man. All right, getting back to the series at but, hand, yeah, though. Yeah, Tomzo should be able to do whatever he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. Has the Blade of the Rune King completed before 10 minutes in the game, so very strong. Has another uh, long sword, so interesting to see what. Uh, he'll be building if he's going to go for Trinity Force, Black Cleaver, a Tiamat. Here's Fate's Call. Yeah, it doesn't matter. As in the bottom lane, we do see a full grab on full send. That's going to be an easy pickup as Callista picks up his first kill of the game. Min Max finally on the board. Yep, and the Infernal Drake is going to be spawning right now. So a fantastic play set up by Omega. Understanding, hey, we got about a minute left before the Dragon. Let's see if we can't find a pick and secure that objective without any sort of resistance whatsoever and that face call came out of fog of war so there's just surprise here's galio <laughs> that that really is it and it's just again the combination from the galio callista it's the surprise factor right that's always been a uh, callista's strong suit as we see a massive poke come out uh from nurse in that mid lane uh, that's always a surprise factor as long as you had the proactive ability to do so that Callista is going to be massive and just destroy you in that setup. Yeah, big time. I loved old Galio with Callista back, back in like <laughs> season five. That was fun. Oh, um, man. When when Galio got the heal thing on his W and the, the his ult was the taunt, that, that was fun. Throwing someone, throwing in a Galio and then pressing R and taunting all five members of the enemy team oh, doing a bunch man. of damage. It was fun. Now we're, now we're just running down memory lane here <laughs> as we do see a little jump in on this bottom side. Tanzo going to be matching against a Zudo in this bottom lane. However, that is a little difficult as the calling comes out. Very nice shots as about 70% of the shots land. But here we go. A little jump in trying to clear the wave and take some poke again in response. Three members on this bottom side. Although the dragon's not going to be up for another three minutes, 45 seconds. That will be a Cloud Drake. So, Cloud Soul coming out with a potential 30% CDR for either team. Yeah, and, you know, that would be big for either team, honestly, getting Olaf's Ragnarok down as a big oh. Flash Vanguard's Edge. Yeah, Flash, but it does get away, but that still means that Brahma is going to be the target of focus. Glacier Fizzle goes out. There goes the exhaust as well. Tan comes out, and on the top side, we see Yasa getting jumps on. Bottom lane skirmish is over, but Yasa actually gets knocked back the exact same way, and he goes oh. golden! Supermark, I think, accidentally hit that button, and that's gonna be a slowdown, but Dilon now getting jumped oh. on as well. Minmax with a beautiful cleanse. Captain Jack, where are you at? Yeah, I think that's that's probably reason number two as to why Minmax took cleanse, is for the charm there. Probably the Brom stun would be reason number one, but coming in clutch and you saw trying to chase but oh <laughs> oh my gosh let's see is she leveling yeah so close is doing the thing where you alternate between q and w or q and e and not putting any points in your w so that is a rank four uh q which is the pierce so that did a lot of damage <laughs> does 215 base damage plus the ad scaling so doing quite a bit of damage Absolutely, and again, Kindred, very, very squishy, and because she didn't get off to a good start, Yasa is now going to be down the entire time. Again, uh, I still think Yasa is only on about two, um, if I'm not mistaken, is only on two stacks right now, or two mark claims, so he is drastically far behind in his damage output. Yeah, definitely, because what the mark does is increases the damage onto the wolf, uh, the W, um, so that increases the percent health damage that Wolf passively puts out while he's out and about. Uh, also, obviously, increases your attack range, and um, I believe it does something else to you, to the E as well, but I forget exactly what that one does. But overall, when you have more marks, you just get stronger as Kindred, and getting that range is big, because if you can get your second upgrade, you're at 600 range. Mm -hmm. So... That's big when you are when you are an AD carry type champion, a marksman champion with dashes and things like that. If you are 600 range, you're feeling pretty good. No, absolutely. And again, still trying to power up as we do see that mid lane being hammered down. And again, Rift Herald is up, but I don't know if that's going to be the primary objective that uh, that either team wants to move towards. Yeah, I mean, for the side of Omega, they don't need it. 
it would be nice for them to take it, and they oh. might be able to bait out a fight as NDMA eats half his health bar. But they might be able to bait out a fight from it, and I think that's kind of why they're doing it, is just, hey, we can bait a fight, and if not, then we can get a turret somewhere. Yeah, it's they got a like tower on the bottom lane, at least. So, yeah, they trade it, it seems. They trade the objective, and Dragon is now coming up as well. So the first Cloud Drake is on the table in 40 seconds. You can see the entirety of Omega Gaming Resistance actually moving down. Oh, that stop was big onto yeah. uh, Azuda. That means he can't go back and spend... His, I mean, he only has about 880 gold, but still, he's not going to be able to recall in time for this dragon. Yeah, and uh, I know you were a little confused about why d went teleport Ari with um, Electrocute. Just to add to the confusion, did buy the Hextech GLP. So, <laughs> seems like okay. Glacial yeah, yeah, yeah. Ari probably should have been the... The, the right the, choice. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, it's to kind of throw it out there before we get into a fight again, Glacial Augment Ari is usually the one that you do if you're playing the utility and team fight. If you go electrocute, that means you're trying to solo kill someone. If you run electrocute, you want to go the Ludens usually. She didn't do that, so she is effectively cutting her utility down by at least a fourth, I would say. Tower does go down in the mid lane. Tower goes down top as well, but remember, Primer does oh. have that open, but Big Stun comes down, and that's it! Syndra gets the one shot. Dragon goes down to a Mega Gaming Resistance, and the fight is on. Axe gets thrown does hit against the shield, and that's going to be the throw in as well. Very nice hold as a Zudo now getting chased out. Doesn't have flash. Remember, lands of sight. What are you doing? You're not keeping anyone alive. Yasa throws it down just with style as he goes down as well. And Dragon Tower and four kills secures a massive lead for Omega Game Resistance. Yeah, this game is starting to look out of control. If, if World Class Full Send cannot stop the bleeding and buy this Gangplank some time, uh, this game's gonna be over relatively soon because Kindred's having a rough go of things. That first <laughs> blood set her behind big time. Yeah. Uh, going the warrior black cleaver build, it looks like with Berserker Greaves. That feels bad as a Kindred when you don't have any marks. Because if you have marks and you have black cleaver, it feels pretty good. But when when you're behind like this and you're sitting on a, a ruby crystal towards your black cleaver at almost 20 minutes into the game. You know it was a rough one. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Again, every single person on the side of World Class Full Center is sitting at one death or two deaths, and I think that goes to show the power and prowess of Omega Gaming Resistance so far. They had definitely spread the kills around to everyone pretty evenly, but it wasn't one person dominating the entirety of the game, right? We saw Tonzo and Supermark get that early kill, but Nurse in the mid lane has done fantastic. Minmax and Cleave in the bottom lane have also done so well in holding that lane, right? Like, everyone on Omega Game Resistance have uh, definitely stepped up to the plate in this playoff series. Yeah, and that's what you want from your team going into playoffs is everyone needs to step up all at once. That's how you win championships. And I've been impressed with the Fates calls so far, throwing them out of Fog of War or hitting them at the correct time when the enemy team's trying to run away to make sure that they are unable to. Uh, they've been on point so far, have been min -max and Cleave. Had a little bit of a rough go the first couple levels, but you know, when you're laning against Lucian Braum, that's kind of to be expected, but since that point, they've been playing very well. Oh, absolutely. I would not doubt them at all. And again, the double exhaust now causing problems, I feel, for the side of World Class Full Send. Um, they don't have any defensive capabilities. Yes, the exhaust can be used both sides, but there's no way to keep Azuto alive for a little bit longer <laughs> that you would usually have with like the heal, right? So. It's definitely or even barrier uh, if you want it something on a little bit of a lower cooldown. Let's go back to season three when ADCs took barrier because mm -hmm. I believe that's on an even shorter oh. cooldown as outplayed. Oh. Not quite. Yeah, if if I think if he had thrown the W as well or, or prepped another Q, that would have worked. Uh, just unfortunately, not uh, just barely not enough damage. Um, again, Nurse though definitely uh, very happy with the current state of game and. You know, the stuns, this is what the scary part is. You can actually see the vision line starting to get pushed up. Yeah, and it's going to become scary and scary for World Class and for Yasaw especially, because Yasaw's getting starved right now. Mm -hmm. Can't even enter his own jungle. There's, like, no way for the Kindred to start to become relevant without getting a bunch of camps and a bunch of farm. So as the vision line gets pushed up, you're just strangling this Kindred even harder. And it's just... Is, I don't see an easy way out of this game for world class right now. I don't even see like a medium way out of this game. Like 
for them to win this game oh, oh. is going to be incredibly hard. And you saw it just has to burn the lambs despite just to not die. I mean, that is one reason why you take it is to immediately stuff the one shot potential. Uh, <laughs> but you know, well, that, there's that's no a... response. To it. It's, it, it feels bad. Oh, but oh. we do see a catch on that mid lane. Min Max actually getting caught out by the Glacial Fissure and Concussed Blows. That's going to be the kill as we do see a teleport from behind. Tonzo does get stunned up as well. In comes the grand entrance. Doesn't catch anyone. Vanguard's head catches two, though. Azudo dashing backwards, trying to stay alive. Does flash, does not survive. So that's going to be Primer getting exhausted as well. Flashes over the wall, back into Dilan, who is oh, there Tonzo. to help the team. But in the back line, that is going to be the kill as well. Another kill comes out. Double kill for your nurse. And that's going to be the triple in a bloodbath of, of a three for four in favor of Omega Gaming Resistance. Yeah, the good news for World Class is they got three kills. They're no longer being shut out in terms of kills. The bad news is four of them died. You got a 4-0 and Irelia and a 6-0 and Syndra, so... Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no, Yasa. Oh, you don't have anything. No! <laughs> Stat check, and you lost that one, Mr. Oh. Oh. Welcome to 10% cooldown on your ultimates, by the way. <laughs> that, yeah. plus, I believe, ultimate hunter currently, uh, that is going to be a total, uh, if, uh, if she has five stacks, plus the Luden, so that's 20 plus uh, an extra 25, uh, plus <laughs> another 10, so that's what, that's a 40, that's 55% cooldown reduction yeah. on a level two, uh, level two Hovering over it's got a 48 second cooldown, so uh, Jeez. pretty much up any time you see her. Yeah, uh, Nurse had the ultimate up when, remember, the two ultimates were used at the same time. Yasa's ultimate is still <laughs> about a quarter left to come back up. That feels so bad. Yeah, and they're going to get 10% more CDR as soon as this dragon gets rendered away. Ooh, Tom's yeah, with the fancy stun. Yeah, and, and now getting a little bit more serious as we do see that third dragon being taken, right? We, you were saying that World Class Full Send, obviously this game is not going in their favor. They're down about, I want to say, uh, 7k, right? Looking forward, right? Even in this game, you know, they don't really have the composition to bring it back in the mid to late game, I feel. What do you think needs to happen in this, in this latter part of the series? They need to have... Uh, they probably just need to run an actual early game jungler if you're going to be running a scaling top laner like the Gangplank. Um, I get what they were going for. They have a bully bot lane and a mid lane that should be able to hold their own. So that way, the bottom half of the map can stabilize for the top side, the jungle and top, who are not strong early. However, it just seems kind of like when you give a player like your nurse a champion like Syndra that is just kind of not overpowered but just really good right now if you're playing something that's kind of off meta like this Ari you can't really rely on that pick to really dominate lane mm -hmm. um, well, so, not without jungle help right yeah and when you have uh, when you have a jungler like the kindred who especially got destroyed just level one, had to blow the flash early, came back for red and died. Uh, you know, if if Kindred was another was a jungler that could do something early, like Rek'Sai or Lee Sin or Elise or something, things might be different right now, just a little bit. So you gotta kind of combo some early game with some more early game. Yeah, maybe. And again, it sounds harsh, but not dying level one is a huge yeah. thing um you know it, it sounds bad whenever we put it out like that you know oh it's their fault but no honestly omega gaming resistance knew that the plan was to get the kindred to camp mid lane or at least camp one of the lanes right setting behind the kindred is omega gaming resistance's win condition keep the jungler behind not uh there's not another chance for her to come back in the game and you have pretty much a 4v5 for the rest of the game so yep, again definitely. i wholeheartedly agree with you on that point very uh, very true in terms of, you know, the win condition is draft a little bit earlier jungler there, so. Or have a scaling jungler with early game lanes or something mm -hmm. that can hold its own early on. That's that's kind of the sweet spot, is if you're going to run something scaling, you need, you need something to protect it. That's why ADCs have supports. 
That's why this yeah. has been the way it has been for the last 10 years, is ADCs need time to get items before they become champions and are able to do what they're designed to do. So you just give them a support to sit there and babysit and make sure that they can get to that point. And scaling champions and other lanes need that too, and that, that responsibility generally falls to the jungler, or vice versa, where if you have like a Karthus jungle or something, which is something that was banned this game, so... It seems like Yasaw has a penchant for the scaling junglers, is that you need something top lane like a Renekton or something that can actually have lane priorities. That way, if you get invaded on, they can come help. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just to point out again, at 25 and a half minutes, Kindred is still only sitting on two marks. That is... That just shows how far behind Kindred is as yeah. the uh, Baron was trying to be baited out here. Yeah, to put it quite bluntly, it, it's it's bad. <laughs> and not, not to say Yasa's like a bad player or anything. It's just this is a bad game for him. Like when you when you sit on two stacks in a twenty five minute game as Kindred, it's it's probably over unless someone else on your team is carrying. Oh yep, that's Dylan. No, he got he got the save. Very nice. NBM eight able to come in with the Guardian plus the shield. Actually didn't block any of the shield there, of uh, any of the unleashed power. But we do see another sun go out. Wow, very nice clock. Onto his Dudo, but the Cannon Barrage actually stuffs the Baron Engage. So Primer, even though he was behind, is able to get a Ooh, little bit of damage off Hanzo. Now getting caught off, Vigor Death Whoa. flies right in, but an immediate burst has a huge knockout for the Fate Skull. Does get all four. That's going to be the chase going out. That's going to be the cleanup as Aurelia flying true with the edges of Night. That is going to be a huge triple kill and a four for one turnaround by the side of Omega Gamer Resistance. It looks so good for world-class full send, but they sent it just a little too hard. You saw I got one shot. Like, <laughs> he did not have time to press Lamb's Respite. He just died. I think if he got that Lamb's Respite off, they might have been able to at least kill one or two more members. Mm -hmm. They probably still would have all died just because of how fed Tonzo is, but like, man, if that Lamb's Respite went down, that was world-class's shot at actually getting something going because that cannon barrage like you said was absolutely destroying primer's level 15 he's doing all right for himself on this game plan he doesn't have seven kills like tonzo but he's got over 200 cs he's got trinity force and essence reaver and he did quite a bit of damage not only with the cannon barrage but landing those crit barrel chains too yeah and it's and uh one of the big things that i always uh it, a lot of people forget about the fact is Baron actually provides a debuff of magic resistant armor when you're attacking it and the cannon barrage didn't go down immediately right as soon as they tag the Baron and say oh okay it's there he waited until it was fully stacked up and then said I'm going to drop the cannon barrage that way it does maximum damage across everyone uh, so that is huge and that's something that I think a lot of uh, skilled players take into effect right you don't want to stop them right away you wait for the stacks to go up that way you have a little bit easier time uh dealing some damage so very nice job from them um yeah and, and i do uh, believe primer. primer has two ultimate upgrades now so i mm. probably has the fire at will and the death's daughter you saw it going for red smite but tonzo's really fast with with air soul uh which they they, they picked up air soul by the way i don't think yes. they actually said that but it gives <laughs> you the extra movement speed as well as the 30 percent ult cdr and with three bottom now they go towards baron yeah, another cannon barrage though goes down. Supermark has to run away. This is actually so good for the side of world class full send. Uh, yep, they yeah, stop another mid. Baron engage. Oh my gosh, they're, they're actually stalling this game out so well. <laughs> yeah, and Gangplank has a BF sword and another crit cloak, so getting close to Infinity Edge as well. So, you know, Primer is kind of their last hope here because Lucian with the crit build does do so all right at this point in the game once he has the infinity edge probably could try to do things mm -hmm. but uh lucian doesn't scale very well this re this glacial less glacial re not 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 coming through really well right now mm -hmm. kindred's still 0 4 so it's basically up to primer to be the hard carry force and he's the only one who lived through that baron fight so he's he's not he understands that he needs to be the one to get things done he really does and i mean last time these two teams played this is actually the same issue that i think uh omega gaming resistance had uh they had trouble closing out the game both teams actually had it so these decisions are actually mimicking their last series i feel as the baron 
for the third time is started up. This time I think they might have a little easier time as MDMA is definitely poked out pretty hard there. No GP ultimate just yet, so they say, okay, this is the time. So we've seen Min Max throwing that <laughs> Galio over the wall. That's going to be the kill as the Baron is slain. And they finally get their Baron that they've been working for the past four minutes on. Yeah, and I was going to say before that happened, they don't really need to be this scared. They have the Callista. While they did nerf how much Ren does when you use it on a big monster like that, you can still add it to your smite combo. It, even if it's not more than smite, it still contributes. So if you time it correctly, you can still outsmite. There's oh. about you saw. Wow. Oh, he okay. got it! He red got buff. it! The red buff! <laughs> that was it, ladies and gents. That is it. But I think they were worried about Yasaw using the Lambs Respite on Baron and potentially mm. stealing it after they used the Ren Smite combo. So maybe that was their thought process. But I, I think they didn't need to be, they didn't need to play that as conservatively as they did. I think yeah. they could have forced it a little harder. Yeah, a little bit too much respect for your opponent at that point is kind of, is kind of what that was, it feels like. Yeah, because I mean, Syndra and Aurelia have not died yet. Tanzo and your nurse have had fantastic games. Even if they lose the Baron, I think they wipe them afterwards. So either way, but these cannon barrages, man, killing the killing the Baron up minions, no problem. Yeah, and, and we see that, but at the oh. same time, topside Tonzo just says, "All right, Dylan, you have no damage. You went glacial augment with no team and electrocute. You ain't gonna do anything." So do you see that top lane still being punished, and they sent uh, what looked to be the two weakest team uh, members on the side to deal with this eight and seven, eight zero oh, and seven. Uh, Aurelia bottom lane now broken out as well. That's going to be two inhibitors possibly going down as a big stun comes out. And that's going to be a potential kill. No, Lance oh. Knight keeps MDM8 alive. Inhibitor goes down. Top lane as well goes down. And this just might be the push to end the game. Yeah, Lamb's Respite was used as well as D-Lun's Flash and Ultimate to try to find a pick there. But all three inhibitors are down. They still have Baron. This should be the end of the game, barring some miraculous team fight. Yeah, that might be it, but the ultimates are all down. Cannon Barrage is down, Lambs of Spite and Spirit Rush is down. Only the Coaling and the Glacial Fissure, two ultimates, would be great if they were ahead, but they are not. As the first Nexus Tower goes down, the entire base is in ruins. As we do see the flash out, Glacial Fissure goes out, and ultimates go wide. That is going to be the Vanguard's Edge missing, but it oh, doesn't man, matter. As the entire source of damage is there, as a clean ace comes out, Lambs of Sight, no more triple kill. Four men max, and that is going to be in a 32-minute slaughter, a win for Mega Gaming Resistance. Yeah, and there's no real other way to describe it other than a slaughter. They had a plan level one. They they made that plan happen. And looking at the damage charts here, you saw actually did less damage than NDME. So Kindred getting out damaged by a Braum means that... Uh, you should probably try something different. Otherwise, you're out of playoffs because this is a best of three. And uh, it looks like World Class needs to hit the reset button here just a little bit. Yeah, and looking at how that game played out, we were, we were suspect, right? Even from the get-go of the draft phase coming out of World Class Full Send, uh, we were a little bit suspicious because it seemed fairly obvious where the uh, Kalissa and Galio were going to go. And then World Class Wilson picked a few champions that were really off. So do you think this was wholeheartedly on the side of the draft phase? It just didn't work? Or do you think, again, uh, it might have just been the execution method? It's a little bit of both. Like, this draft could have worked. Um, you know, you could combo Braum with Lucian if Lucian gets ahead. And Kindred if Kindred's not as far behind as the Kindred was they can kind of roam around and make some things happen. And if Ari is strong, um, you know, she can sideline somewhat okay and try to help find picks and things of that nature. But when everyone aside from Primer just kind of gets wrecked, um, there's not a whole lot that can be done. So I think a draft like this can work. It's just, it's very fragile. And if you draft something that's a little more sturdy, in the jungle position and you like if you run back the same team comp with a different jungler someone in a little more early game they probably have better results they might still end up losing but i think things would be a little bit better off for them 
All right, well, there you go. We'll have to see if World Class Full Send are able to bring it back in game number two, or if Omega Gaming Resistance are going to sweep it 2-0. Don't go anywhere. The uh, quarterfinals match between these two awesome teams will continue right after this. Yeah, she's got some nice long hair and you know that she's a bad chick All the boys stare, can't help it, it's a habit Clothes that she wears, short skirt and a jacket I just wanna get her all alone on a mattress I just wanna have it, I just gotta have it Boomers all around say her body is fantastic All natural, not a piece of fur is plastic to her toes, yeah, they say that she's a lad. Yeah, the whispers all around say she has a reputation. Don't believe it till I see it, so I want a demonstration. And I've always learned it better with a hands on education. So I need a private session if you get what I am saying. And they say that she's not easy, no, she's really complicated. But that only makes it better, and it's got me so fixated. And I'm not the type to wait around, I've never hesitated. But she's got me captivated, so the game I'm gonna play it, yeah. Got a body like a coke thing She likes to keep the party going These rumors got me feeling lonely I want that body, baby, show me She's got a body like a coke thing She likes to keep the party going These rumors got me feeling lonely I want that body, baby, show me You like to stay out late. I heard you have. 
had a couple boyfriends I heard they didn't treat you right I heard you're hated by your girlfriend Cause all the guys want you tonight Yeah They say she's too hot They say she's too cold Where she came from Nobody really knows They say she looks young But say she acts And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the series between Omega Gaming, Resistance, and World Class Full Send. We saw the first game go drastically in favor of Omega Gaming Resistance, almost like their meeting within the regular season. Yeah, and like that, they were a little bit apprehensive about the Baron take. That's the only thing that they seemed not super confident in. Um, For they good reason. Got to, it. Get, to get the reason. For good reason. <laughs> The cannon barrage was nasty. Yeah, the cannon barrage has definitely forced them off. But other than that, they didn't. I don't think they need to be that apprehensive about it, honestly. Mm -hmm. But in the end, they got it done, and it, like you said, it was a slaughter. Um, World class full send tried a bit of a scaling comp and got a little rolled in the early game. When that happens, there's really not a lot the scaling comp can do because if the mid game comp gets rolling and does mid game things, the late game never never happens. So. Looking for world class to kind of hit the reset button this time around and draft some things that have some agency early on, uh, so that way they have actual options instead of just kind of getting whatever scraps Omega leaves behind for them. Yeah, that's honestly true. As we do get into the pick ban phase here, world class full set on the blue side and Omega Gaming Resistance on the red side. We do see the Tarek ban away still from world class full send this is pretty much the same for them however omega game resistance decided to ban away the olaf this time so they'll be forgoing the zach karthus or pike bans this time yeah and you know it kind of makes sense if you, you're saying hey look you saw probably gonna just first pick the olaf and play something like that i and then you know super mark's like i can play all sorts of other stuff so it's not that big a deal if you want to take away the olaf we can definitely do that and then taking away the Karthus takes away another scaling jungler option because we saw what the Kindred did. It wasn't really a whole lot. So we'll see what they try to do Ooh. when they take away the Syndra, which I think is, is, you know, like you said and what we've both said, very strong right now, just very solid mid lane champion, able to do just about anything you need a mid laner to do. Yeah, Syndra being a blind pick here, there are options to shut her down but honestly she's so strong in that lane phase uh can be flexed into that uh bottom lane role in that apc uh however gragas and uh, zach are still both available ziggs is uh, i believe considered a counter to the syndra just with the range advantage if you can land the poke uh so that is locked in probably gonna match syndra wherever they go and the galio once again picked up so heavy ap for the side of omega gaming resistance and, and I believe it was in the Mad Lions G2 series where Caps played Ziggs into <laughs> uh, the Syndra bottom. Ended oh, up being man. a rough game for Caps. Be <laughs> when, when you don't realize the satchel charge will actually knock you away, even though it's like the primary description of it. Yeah, um, so that, that kind of sucked for G2. But overall, Caps did, you know, relatively okay on it. He just forgot that when you're teleporting the Syndra can ult you and kill you while you teleport top lane and things like that but overall yeah the Syndra to Ziggs magic with this ends up being bottom lane would be pretty interesting but you know traditionally Syndra and Ziggs are you know mid lane champions so we'll see where those two end up going here but Leona being picked wow. up as well as Graves and I've been waiting for people to start playing more Graves in competitive play because he's actually like technically stronger than he was when he last got nerfed yeah he is a good champion especially matched with the leona and the syndra it's both great setup potential uh to give Gray's access to those fights and we do see the pantheon cover coming out here that can be a pantheon top or jungle uh due to the fact that the galio zigs are currently up so i assume that's a galio support with the zigs either mid or apc so now we're getting into the second round of band phase I believe looking for a jungle uh, slash mid slash ADC for the side of uh, Omega Gaming Resistance. Uh, and World Class Full Send still looking, I believe, for that ADC and top. Yeah, and they will take away the Gangplank 
So making sure that Primer cannot just play that late game scaling pick, uh, thwart the Barons with the Cannon Barrage. Uh, it definitely buys Omega, like, you know, makes it to where he doesn't have this just global ability to stop whatever it is they're doing, makes their makes their game closing out a little easier. Because like we said, that seems to be Omega's biggest hole in their game is just decisiveness when it comes to ending the game. Yeah, that's going to be... Uh... Gangplank and Silas both banned away, and the Talia Orn banned away as well. So, uh, big bans coming out for the mid and top lane for both sides, respectively. And now Omega Gaming are going to be looking to lock in something that potentially has a bit more sustained damage than a Ziggs Galio. You would think so. <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, we, we would think so, but considering how the draft phase went before, you are very right. We're not sure. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. They, they may just pick another ADC, but there's Camille. So Hubbard, that last game, opted into the Irelia. But this time, a little bit more blind. There isn't just that gangplank sitting there going, hey, play Irelia. So, you know, probably maybe predicting, hey, you might want to play Aatrox. Camille oh. beats Aatrox and does pretty good into other things. And Camille can do pretty okay into Jax, as long as you use your Hextech ultimatum to dodge the stun on the counter strike. Yeah, that's actually also good to find and catch out other potential members uh, like the Graves who likes to dash around, you know, locking down Graves and killing him quickly uh, and the Cinder as well. So we'll have to see what they match up with it. But Jack's locked in. So a very heavy skirmish slash pick potential here from World Class Full Sin. Yeah, and ooh, okay. okay. So that is Cinder mid with Aphelios Leona. So, you know, this this draft looks a bit more stable from the side of world class full i i wouldn't just say a bit i would say a lot oh yeah it is definitely way more stable graves another marksman well i don't know if you can count him as a marksman anymore but a ranged ish jungler that does physical damage definitely way tankier than a kindred uh you do have some scaling options for world class still with jackson aphelios and to somewhat extent Sindra can scale somewhat as well and you actually have full-on engage this time with Leona and you know, to some extent Jax and Aphelios if you use the Moonlight Vigil with the Gravitum to get some roots going down as a last resort for an engage. You can do that as well. Um, so I like this draft from World Class a lot better than last time. For the side of Omega, um, that could be Tristana mid and Zig's bottom. That's a thing that could happen. Um, but overall, their draft looks just like they're continuing to do what they were doing. Pantheon is a good early game jungler. Camille can do really well in the 1v1 top side, much like Irelia and can destroy team fights. And then you got Galio support again. And so it just kind of comes down to where Ziggs and Tristana go. Yeah, I will say, depending on how aggressively uh, you hit that level 2 spike, Tristana can actually be a pretty big menace um, in that lane. Uh, if you do the um, if you do the satchel or not the satchel the sticky bomb first onto Syndra and the burst damage is just extremely high especially if you go the press the attack right yep. so there is a fair potential for Tristana to go mid like you said uh, however I mean, we do know that Pantheon is going jungle so you know we'll see what happens and who they decide to put mid yeah because that that level two on Tristana is deceptive like you said, uh, getting the fully stacked bomb and using the jump to detonate it nets you another jump. So if they flash away and they're not under tower, you can jump back on in and continue to slow them while you're autoing the whole time. And with press the attack, you do have some pretty decent kill potential on the Tristana. It's just a matter of making sure that you do not get, um, you know, stunned by Syndra as you try to go in. Because then you're just kind of, you can't do a whole lot. You got to back up. Yeah, it'd be, uh, it'd be pretty crazy to see that. Um, and we'll have to see what happens again. We just did have a little technical issue. A client did bug out a little bit for one of our players. So we will be getting directly in the lobby here very shortly. Um, but again, looking at, uh, looking at this entire setup, I... I want to go back to how stable it feels like World Class Full Sense uh, composition is, right? Uh, and I want to particularly look at this top lane because, as you said, the Jackson Camille definitely very different. 
Yeah, and you know, you think of most Jax matchups into melee auto attackers as favoring Jax just due to the fact that his counter strike, you know, dodge auto attacks, stun him the whole time he's smacking you down. But with Camille, it's a little bit different because if the Camille player is cognizant enough of where they're positioned in lane, she can use her hookshot to get stunned as she's flying away. And then the stun is done by the time she's ready to launch the second part of the hookshot, the leap, and stun. So Jax, it's, it's basically just a skill matchup is the, the common term for it. But it's kind of just a skill matchup for the side of Camille, more or less. Because with Jax in these types of matchups, you just kind of smack people with your lamp over and over again. But Camille yeah. has to nuance it a little bit. It has to be able to to dodge the correct things, use the hex tech ultimatum effectively. Otherwise, Jax just turns on his ult and just keeps autoing you, and you eventually die. Yeah, that's a that's always a scary thing. It's just like ah, uh, mm, you know, just <laughs> continually getting your head beat in. Uh, I do want to move towards this jungle matchup as well now, because again, Graves still that kind of aggressive side, but also Pantheon not the most uh early game you know super aggressive invade getting your face type of jungler i feel he's more uh, i feel gank heavy in preference yeah i mean you can do a fair amount of invading on pantheon especially one thing i've seen is to take press the attack on pantheon and just try to always lead with an empowered w to get those three quick strikes to proc the pta and then use your q from there um you can do some invading that way. If you're going to go conquer, you're probably more of just the gank heavy style. But against the Graves, it's hard to imagine a Pantheon going in and trying to kill Graves just due to the fact that his grit gives him so much armor uh, once that's fully stacked up to where the, the point where Pantheon probably actually loses that 1v1 after a certain point. If he doesn't get in and kill him quick, Graves can just sit there and sustain. Yeah, absolutely. As we do get the rest of these picks here, it does look like that is going to be Ziggs versus Syndra in that mid lane. Uh, so they have opted for ADC versus ADC. And now walk me through this mid lane because it uh, it definitely feels like Syndra has the upper advantage in the early to mid. But I mean, that range can be very dangerous on your nurse on the Ziggs. Yeah, definitely. Um, the big thing for anyone laying in Ziggs, whether it's bottom lane, mid lane, top lane, whatever, do not stand next to your range minions. Just don't do it. It's free cues for Ziggs. So as long as d does not stand in the range minions and forces Ziggs to choose either poke or hitting minions with his cues, you can react with your own Q combos with Syndra and poke him down. And once level six comes in, the Ziggs just kind of has to sit back and just wave clear from a distance unless ganks come in because, you know, Syndra, press R, you die. So it, it's pretty straightforward as far as once once ults come out ziggs just kind of pves but early on you know as long as dlun doesn't stand in the minions ziggs has to choose between poke or pushing and with pantheon you know you may want to push and try to roam or allow pantheon to try and invade depending on what they want to do or to roam up top lane and try to dive jacks there's a lot of different things that a pantheon is capable of doing and Ziggs has the ability to get priority at the drop of a hat, so he can definitely help the Pantheon out. All right, and uh, lastly, before we do get into the intermission, I do want to, you know, take a look at things overall. Uh, looking at everything, I want to get your opinion. We saw what happened in game number one. Do you think that World Class Full Send have a much easier time, and do you think the game is more on even footing this time, or do you still think that the composition on the side of Omega Gaming Resistance still have an overwhelming advantage? It's not an overwhelming advantage for Omega anymore. Uh, World Class definitely has a way better draft this time around. They they actually gave themselves options. They have more than one win condition now. They can split push with Jax. They have team fighting with Aphelio, Syndra, Leona, and Graves. Jax can contribute to that as well. Things are definitely a lot easier for World Class Full Send to actually uh, make, make a game out of it this time. Um, the only thing I'm kind of worried about with Omega is that their only true actual engage is Camille jumping in or Pantheon ulting in because there's lots of ways for the side of world class to get away from it. However, the thing you have to worry about is the Hextech ultimatum and hero's entrance combo. That 
that could be the big changer here is just Camille finding the target, finding a Zudo or Dlun, locking them up. Galio comes in and locks them up as well. And then from that point on, World Class has to fight a man down. And that's probably how Omega is going to try to play this one. So we'll see what ends up happening. But if, if Primer can be as strong on Jax as he was on Gangplank last game, the side lane is going to be very interesting to watch. All right, well, we'll have to see if that comes true. As we do wind down, we will be going to a short intermission. But before that, I do want to talk about one of our fantastic sponsors, Midwest Esports. Midwest Esports has been around for many years, starting as a small student group out of Wichita State University. Since then, Midwest Esports has grown to be a veteran organizer to tournaments and events throughout the U.S. They host tournaments for games like League of Legends, Rocket League, as well as Overwatch, and are recently starting to foray into the Dota 2 scene as well. So if you're interested for more information, check them out at MidwestEsports.com. Don't go anywhere though, we'll be right back with game number two between Omega Gaming Resistance and World Class Full Send. Don't go anywhere. for game number two between world class full send and omega gaming resistance we do have the side swapped but we do see some familiar champions coming out the uh we do have the syndra still on the table however on the opposite side and we also have the galleria returning other than that i believe these are uh eight brand new champions across the board for the series yes indeed it is and you know this game hopefully is a lot more balanced than that first game you know, we, we do have World Class with actual early game options this time around, as well as some scaling. They actually have Engage instead of relying on Braum to disengage everything for them to go back in. So 
you know, looking for world class to have a good showing this time around. But that's not to take anything away from Omega. They played game one exactly how they needed to. And here in game two, you know, they they I think they got what they were looking for in terms of draft. They just kind of picked what they were gonna pick, it seems. So they obviously have a game plan in mind with the Ziggs and Tristana to just kind of destroy some towers, the, the tower wrecking crew. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, we do see a cleanse coming out on your nurse, so not going that teleport, which a lot of Ziggs like to favor. Uh, this is because they like to get that early advantage. Uh, they like to hold uh, onto that lead as quickly as possible because they can't they can clear that wave, especially early. We do see on the bottom lane, Midmax actually started the satchel charge, so going for that early push, trying to clear that wave and make sure Azuto at NDM 8 uh, aren't going to get too much harm. However, that does, I believe, mean that Azuto and Endy Mate might hit level 2 first. Yeah, but Yasa is invading on the blue buff a little bit and got pushed out by Supermark showing up, and everyone's trying to collapse on him. But uh, he's just going to get out of there, but that will send, set Yasa behind a little bit. And after what happened to him in game 1, it's uh, definitely something he was hopefully trying to avoid is falling behind, but no vertical jungling this time. Yeah, a little trade on the top side as Tanzo gets that shield and able to trade back a few auto attacks. So, pretty happy about that side as your nurse just chucks a few more bombs left and right. Yeah, but D1 taking oh a good gosh. trade back out as well, and that's kind of that's how that's about all the the skill expression you have on Ziggs. There is just hitting people and minions at the same time and getting those quick trades off as you can. Yeah, they actually uh, they nerfed days. yeah they they nerfed Ziggs a long time ago with the uh, size of the bouncing ball. Uh, I think it used to be an excessive size that even if it even if the entire bomb didn't hit you, it would still blow up and cause damage. So it used to be pretty broken. They changed that I think like two and a half seasons ago. So. Yeah, the first time Ziggs became popular in the bottom lane. Yeah, that was that was disturbing damage that came out, but. Uh, Bottom lane, we do see a full push in here. We Whoa. do see a flash as well. That's going to be a missed taunt as a Zudo as well flash and has to back away. So very heavy trade and they'll take it. Uh, ADC flash or support flash. Yeah, the, the interesting thing to see here is if Cleave has that 5% cooldown run is your nurse is kind of getting ganked, but just kind of walking away. But Supermark's in some trouble. Yeah, Supermark is in some trouble, but they finally get the stun on. That's going to be a Felios dropped with the Satchel Bomb. And that's going to be it. Sticky Bomb claiming the first kill. Supermark having to flash away now. Midmax now trying to help. But though, they get the knock up on NDMA. That actually signals the fight right back in. And he oh. does go down as well. NDMA able to pick up the kill on Midmax. That's going to be Cleave running away now. Taunt goes out, gets both of them. So the slow is there. And that's a one for one trade. However, Azuto going down for first blood. Yeah, going down for first blood. Tristana does have 900 gold, so we'll buy a pickaxe towards the Infinity Edge and come on back, whereas Azuto just has a longsword, so bit of an advantage here as Tomzo gets stunned up. Yeah, a little trade on the top side. However, Primer is definitely taking a big trade on the damage. That's going to be a flash of flash, and that's going to be a kill. Super uh, Mark might actually Mark. die in the jungle as well. <laughs> and there oh, no. it is. Wolves MVP, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, um, I like going the Hunter's Talisman on Pantheon because in those big, those camps like that where there's multiple things, you heal so much off of them and they do a lot of damage back to you. So when you're a Pantheon, you don't auto attack really fast. So getting the extra life steal from the, the Hunter's Machete, not quite as good in that sort of situation as is getting the the aoe healing because you can actually like use the raptors as a health potion if you want especially as someone like pantheon just hit a quick q and walk away and let them heal you up and go back and do it again if you need to you can actually recover most if not all of your health bar doing that so getting executed is never a good look but uh it's always it's always funny for the us watching yeah, I think the best part is when you open up the scoreboard and you're like, uh, wait, the jungler died. How did that... <laughs> oh, and because it, it doesn't show it up. It used to be global. I remember yes, it, it did. It global. used to be global. That was that was the best time because then you get to flame the enemy jungler, <laughs> and you're just like, what, what? <laughs> Those were the days. Those were the days. Yeah, but... I remember Dyrus got executed by wolves once. Oh, well, I think... like, it was it was like I don't remember if it was an LCS game or just on stream or something, but. 
everyone let him have it, and I'm still people bring uh, it up. Who would he have that happen to him actually once? He was trying to get help. I think as a Lissandra, and he just straight up died in the top side. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's happened to everyone, and having it happen here is no exception as we do see trades across the board. I want to go back to that first kill, though, uh, on that top side primer. Now actually having a, uh, you know, even though the CS is close, having an advantage in that top lane and also not being uh, fully ganked 24-7 in that top side, this is a massive difference than game number one already. Yeah, and Tonzo is not doing what he needs to do with his hook shot here. Primer just kind of walks up to him and turns on the counter strike, and Tonzo just kind of hook shots into him to try and stun him while the counter strike is still available. And the optimal way to do it is to use the hook shot into the wall as you're being stunned. So that way you're still moving while the stun is happening and you can continue with your stun once his counter strike is done. Uh, so Tonzo just uh, needs to be a little more mechanically, I don't know if proficient is the right word to use, but just making sure that he uh, plays the matchup correctly. But Ooh. now Tonzo's kind of getting dove. So... Yeah, definitely getting dove here. Tries to jump away, but Unleashed Power, point and click, claims that kill. Yeah, and now Primer gets some tower plates. Oh, no, there's the Mega Inferno bomb. Yeah, that's going to clear out, I think, a decent few of them. He still gets one plate, uh, as the Mega Inferno bomb doesn't actually have as much damage. Uh, Zix had actually opted for the Double Doran's build and got the Sapphire Crystal and Boots, so didn't actually pick up an Amplifying Tome. So, uh, ultimate didn't do as much as it normally does. Yeah, and, you know, I remember it was like season four when Zareth and Ziggs were meta and we had these like 50 minute long games because those two would just live <laughs> here forever. And you even look at it now, uh, your nurse has a pretty big CS lead over d at this point. Yeah, listen, in, listen. In terms of gold, <laughs> it's only 300 gold because d did get that kill. But yes. It's kind of what's to be expected when you're laning against the Ziggs, that he just PVEs the lane and you don't get to interact with him. Yeah, I, I will say I, I feel a little disrespected because I love uh, Zareth in the mid lane still, one of the most annoying champions <laughs> to play uh, against for sure. As we do see the Ritual getting started up, that is going to be a uh, Ritual taken by Supermark, but that's still going to be the kill. As Zealand picks up that kill onto your nurse, collateral damage doesn't get the kill either, but Supermark Super trying doesn't to get have flash away. Yeah, he doesn't, I mean, I don't think he would want to flash in this situation either, as he does try and pick up the kill, Yasa, able to claim that one, and they do get the Rift Herald, but at what cost? Yeah, Yorners got stunned up, got killed, uh, had Cleanse and Flash if he wanted to try to escape, just said, you know, I'm probably just dead here, it's fine. Supermark died, uh, Minmax blew his exhaust, it looks like, so... Just gotta be a little careful when you go in for a situation like that. You gotta make sure that everyone's positioned correctly. So if the collapse comes, that someone can do something. And I don't know if Azuto kind of thought Min Max was in there if he shot that at a minion. <laughs> that would be pretty interesting. As we see, Min Max actually try and do a big jump, but that's oh, gonna be the man, turnaround as NDMA was waiting, and such a big kill comes out. NDMA picking up his second of the game. And Azuto had like one ammo left in the Graviton when he fired that Moonlight Vigil for the extra root. That could not have so gone good. more perfectly for Azuto. Oh, he is so happy about that trade. And already we see this massive change in terms of uh, game state going out for the side of World Class Full Send. Yeah, it turns out when you draft some early game, you can make things happen early. Oh, gosh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a I full mean, call it, out. To put, it, to put it bluntly, that's what it's come down to. Yeah. Like, you're last, not... <laughs> game, last game, they didn't really have anything early in just the Lucian Braum, which we're doing okay in laning phase, but just the Lucian and Braum cannot take over the game. Mm -hmm. Now you have this Leona who can roam and catch out the enemy ADC when they're hiding in the top lane bush for whatever reason. But, uh,. Yeah, just overall, World Class has agency at this point in the game that they did not have in game number one. And they're making the most of it right now. Yeah, I I have to agree. Not only that, we see the Dead Man's, uh, or Gargoyle of Stoneplate actually almost being built for NDM8. Uh, it, it might surprise people, but this is actually pretty standard in the current, uh, the current uh, competitive scene, is always going for that Dead Man's just to give yourself a little bit... There you go, Tomzo. 
Uh, yeah, able to pull away Tonzo now fighting in that top side, but now Supermark, originally he was the one that was being aggressive in game number one, now he's the one being aggressive out of his own jungle. Yasa just says, all right, great stun though, right in the middle. Big taunt knockup and Yasa tries to get off of him and actually picks up the kill, but that is gonna be the trade coming out and Super oh, the bomb. Uh, Mega Inferno Bomb is gonna claim that kill. So, Cleave definitely trying to help out his teammate, granting the kill over. But that's a one-for-one one trade. Not exactly what you want to see when, honestly, Yasa was pretty much on his own, it felt like. Big yeah. stun, though, coming oh. out. And a stun as well, but he did. Great he prepped buffer. it perfectly. Very nice job. But the Unleashed Power now goes on to Cleave. He is now going to pay for his ADC's oh. mistake. You and he guess. still goes down as Primer teleports in. And this game is all uh, being run by world-class full send. Yeah, and... Uh... Minmax actually used the Buster shot on Primer there to try and prevent him from, you know, killing him. But uh, the <laughs> angle that it shot him at, it just kind of shot him in the wall. So he basically didn't move at all. So that's a little unfortunate for Minmax there. Very but, uh, unfortunate. Minmax's as... odds good enough. Yeah, Supermark though finding Yasa there. So remember, Supermark is still able to do some damage. Uh, again, in the early game, he still does very well. Again, Yasa though with that grit stack, is very happy about what's going on. First tower, though, uh, this is one of the benefits of having a Ziggs. Oh, but the Satchel Charge, yeah, super early Yeah, I was going to say, that there. was a little early there. Uh, that was, that was, no, 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 not just a little early. That was extremely early. There was still, I think, about two seconds left uh, before that happens. But big stun comes out. Supermark now having to throw down the wall, but that's still going to be the kill. Not even using the ultimate. Tower does go down in the mid lane, but 10 kills to two. World Class Full Sense, still very happy about the state of the game. Yes, it feels bad for Supermark because, like, you know, Pantheon's not the, the best early game jungler in terms of, like, dueling and stuff, but he's supposed to be the one pulling off all these ganks and getting leads and, you know, star falling into bottom lane and landing some CC and killing people, and he's 0-4 at this point in the game, so he's having a rough go of things this time around. Primer looking to, or Tonzo, rather, looking to find something on Primer, but you really don't want to fight Jax when he already has his passive stacked up. Yeah, not only that, the Conqueror stacks are uh, going to be stacked up soon, too. Here we go. Grand Skyfall is here, though. Good. Hextech Ultimatum, but they're both in the stun range, and that's going to be oh Tonzo. Word, Possibly just going down. That's the sweep, and the shutdown comes down for Supermark. Big save there as they hang on, but Bushgang coming out big as they do find the catch on the cleave. He does get the taunt down. The Chakram's flying fast and furious. That's going to be the stun Ooh. whiffing, though. Very nice buffer on that getaway from cleave. And it was kind of funny watching the Leona and Galio smack each other when they both had their aftershot going. Just these two beefy tanks that don't don't take any damage at all. Something kind of comical about it. Yeah, gotta agree with you there. But again, this show being run by the side of World Class Full Send is a a, a sigh of relief coming out from any World Class Full Send uh, any uh, fans of theirs. Definitely big time i mean the gold is still even that's the thing is the towers have made up the difference in gold now that is standing gold that can be reclaimed by world class as soon as they get some towers going but um you know things are looking a lot better for world class no doubt but they're not completely out of the woods just yet uh zig scales really well tristana obviously scales really well as well and my dogs are barking, and <laughs> but Aphelios also scales really well. So both of these are hyper late game ADCs. Both of these top laners build Trinity Force and can split push into infinity. So it's just kind of like these two teams kind of have near matching like champion picks against them more or less. So it, it, it's going to kind of come down to execution, but Ziggs kind of adds a handicap to it because he can destroy towers from a quarter health. And Syndra destroys people from, you know, full health. Yeah, but this is actually a big problem. Oh, Yurner's getting caught again. out. Yeah, and d -Lun getting chunked out. Good flash out of that last stun, and that might be the kill coming out. Uh, Mega Inferno Bomb is able to claim the kill as the collateral damage does go out. In that bottom lane, as a little bit of poke misses, Midmax almost getting hit by the sniper. So mid lane action and bottom lane action as the Rift Hill is being dropped in that mid lane. Yeah, but Yurners really needs to uh, wait for the little indicator to show up on the satchel. Because, you know, 25% is a lot less than you actually think it is sometimes. You know, there's a, there's a handy little icon that shows up as uh, Shelly or 
Herald, I forget which one, what the second one is called, but doesn't quite take down the mid lane tower for world class, so they're still sitting at zero towers taken. Yeah, and you know, just to go over, uh, you know, Ziggs was one of my uh, one of my favorite mid laners to go to. Again, skill shots, very fun to play with. Here's the thing, though. A lot of mid laners on Ziggs like to max the E second, the uh, the ground bombs, which does give you a damage advantage. However, if you're trying to push for towers, you actually want to max the W because the W grants higher kill percentages on the towers the higher you rank it. Right now, he's only sitting on rank one on the W, so it only does uh, it only kills on a tower that's 50, 25% HP and below. If you rank it up to rank three or four that changes to about 35 to 40 percent it is a massive difference when you're trying to take towers extremely quickly so you know maybe he didn't realize that or it's just he's misjudging the amount of damage he can output yeah and another thing is if you're playing full on tower destruction zigs uh you generally don't go for oblivion or you go for like lich Bane because mm -hmm. That was kind of the thing when the ADC Ziggs first became a thing was Lich Bane, but Primer's in a bit of danger here. Yeah, jungle on top versus jungle on top as Hextech Old Maiden goes out. Primer getting chugged out very, very low. This is a kill. Big kill for Supermark as he flashes away. Dash forward though, that's going to be the stun. Retaliation back here, here comes, comes the great entrance. He is saved by Cleave, the man, the myth, the tower, and stone. That is going to be a oh. solar going out and in goes the it's ADCs though. The ADCs have joined the fight. This is a fiesta as the fight breaks out. A double kill coming out for Tonzo as he goes down, oh, but that's going to be a four for two in favor of Omega Gaming Resistance. And what was that amazing collapse? <laughs> this is one after the other. Jungle top, jungle top. All right, here come the supports. All right, here come the ADCs. Normally it's the ADCs that are still down bottom lane farming, but instead it's the mid laners. But you oh. primer to ruin the fun. Oh, it is now. Your nurse isn't going to get stunned up, but that's just going to be the lamppost taking that kill. And oh my gosh, if... If Omega Gaming Resistance needed a fight to start clawing their way up from the depths of this gold deficit, uh, actually not even a gold deficit as they're uh, ahead, but this feeling of being behind, this that was a fight. That was an amazing fight to take. Definitely, but now they need to set their sights on the dragon. Minmax doing a little bit of damage to NDM8. And Minmax does have his Infinity Edge completed, whereas Zudo just has Essence Reavers, so... DPS may be comparable, but the crit difference, if you only end up critting, Infinity Edge wins out, but they're just going to seed this dragon on over. So now we got more ultimates coming out, and Leona ult is the big one that's already on a really low cooldown. So getting 10% more on that is something you got to keep an eye on, as well as the Moonlight Vigil, because Aphelios does a lot of stuff with his ultimates. So just something to keep in mind for Omega is, you know, these ults are on lower cooldowns than you kind of expect, and that can catch some people off guard sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be our second Cloud Soul of the series. Uh, it seems the gods of League of Legends say, all right, we just want to see big flashy plays come out from both sides. Uh, so that is going to be it. However, no Infernal Drake came on the board. It was actually an ocean. So the side of um, <clears throat> World Class Full Scent, they're going to be very happy with extra health coming in every five seconds. Yeah, and... Um... It looks like Jax, it looks like Primer's building a Black Cleaver, maybe? He's, I mean, he's got a Longsword and a Kindle Gem. Mm -hmm. So they might be building, like, two different items out of that, but I think that's the only item that builds out of a Longsword and a Kindle Gem is Black Cleaver, which would really surprise me, considering there's not an actual tank other than the Galio support on the side of Omega. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to fight front to back, that's definitely a way to do it. Uh, you yeah, know, it's... cut through his armor, but again, it's... It's a Galio support. He's not the tankiest tank that ever lived. He's he's no mm. Season 6 Maokai with his ult turned on or anything. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens with that, but for sure you are correct. That is a little bit of an odd choice. Uh, however, if you're trying to go for a little bit more survivability, if you know you have to be kind of that frontline menace... Uh, instead of the Graves, right? I mean, Black Cleaver is definitely one way to do it. Plus, that's a total, I think, of 40% CDR and two items. Yeah. So he's, he's got his CDR. He's even got the extra ult CDR, so the actual Grandmasters might will be up, so that way he can uh, become tanky. Because mm -hmm. looking at this, it uh, grants him, like, 50 armor 
and how much 50 mr as well with an ad and ap scaling only getting more armor so he gets like 70 free armor for pressing r and that's that's a lot not not really when camille hits you with that big old true damage but she can only do that every once in a while so something to keep an eye on is just how tanky this jax is going to be with grandmaster's might available for him pretty much the whole time yeah, now that we're kind of into this lull in the gameplay, I want to get your thoughts on the state of the game, right? And where do these two teams go? As we see three towers to one, gold <coughs> gold lead is currently in favor of... Uh, <coughs> sorry, I'll make a game <laughs> of resistance. But it, does, it definitely doesn't feel like it with the kill difference. So, I mean, what do these teams need to do to really break it open? As a, uh, Actually, we can't even talk about it. As Nurse is actually getting caught out pretty heavily here. He does have flash oh, yeah. available, but he is getting collapsed on very heavily. Collateral damage is up. Oh, he dodges, and that's going to be the solo flare as well, but the oh, cleanse, cleanse is not low. enough. And that's going to be the kill as... I mean, I just wanted to talk. That's all we yeah. wanted to do. But a big kill think, coming out onto uh, your nurse. I think for your nurse, Gala, he needed to walk back away from the tower, tank the Leona ult, and cleanse it as soon as you could, and then walk away. Because mm. now they're starting up this Baron. They don't have the correct Aphelios guns to really do it super quick. There's one of them now. Severum comes out of nowhere. Gotta love it. But um, it's getting low, and I think they're just going to have to try and give it. Oh, yeah, that is going to be the though. take, but Teleport coming in as well. This is a 4v5 fight, 3v5 for the time being. In comes the Grand Entrance, and that's going to be the save. But now everyone on the side of Omega Gaming Resistance are in the pit. That's a flash out. That's another flash, and that's three flashes <laughs> oh, that's coming flash. all the way out. <laughs> Uh, Tonzo actually didn't flash, just used the roast, but immediately come right back out. I don't know if that was a desperate attempt to stop, but they burn a massive summoner spells for literally nothing. Yeah, I mean, maybe they were just trying to see if they could pick off as many people after the Baron as possible to just get the buffs off the table. Because now, Jax has Trinity Force, he has the Black Cleaver, and he's got Baron buff. You know, the only thing that a Jax could probably want more would be like Blade of the Rune King or Gunblade just for some sustain. But this Jax is sitting pretty up in this top side right now. And uh, now with Dragon coming up in 30 seconds, Jax should be able to get this tower. But Galio! Oh! oh Yo, if you wanted a way to fight that back, the Fanatic Death Rush is the way to go. They find two and they will claim the Dragon as the rightful prize. But the top lane is going down right now, so someone has to go answer. Yeah, and this is what this game is going to come down to now that Primer has two completed items on the Jax. Is he's just going to look to side lane pretty much for the rest of the game, you would have to imagine. But a zoo <laughs> exhaust for exhaust. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't matter as a big damage source comes out in d -Lun. He said, ah, it's my turn to press the skill button as he gets the kill. Uh, but... Again, these little trades back and forth. I mean, this is crazy fighting. Yeah, and it's just going to get crazier, I think. And these guys are going to go in and forget that the other has oh. ignite. They do get the dragon. Yeah, big sun coming out as Cleave eats the uh, scout of the week. That's going to be multiple fights go out. Moonlight Vigil does land, but that's going to be the kill. As your nurse is now caught between a rock and a hard place, that's going to be the kill as well. d picking up a double as he is now 6, 1, and 5 in this game yeah and it's the power of syndra we talked about it in game one and while uh your nurse did not die on syndra in game one uh Dylan's having a pretty good game on it for himself here so you gotta watch out for it because she just does so much damage but tonzo having a good trade here hextech ultimatum is available if he wants it oh, oh need it. <clears throat> stylish says camille but mid lane is getting pushed down as well but still solo kill on the primer this is probably why he tried to go the black cleaver he knew that the trades were going to be very painful against tonzo yeah and it looks like he's going for either gunblade or blade of the rune king now building up towards that build water cutlass so jack's 100 percent just going for side lane pressure it looks like and you know after you get solo killed in the side lane like that with baron still it's kind of concerning for primer uh, and you can see just how upset he was. He pinged Camille's flash like four times in the chat. <laughs> so you know that he's like, man, I goofed. That's on me. My bad, guys. So just looking looking for Primer to have a bit of a redemption arc now after that. Yeah, really hoping so. Again, though, uh, you know, these 
these little trades back and forth are really showing some of the strain, I feel. Because even though it's 18 to 11, Primer still tried to play that as conservatively as he could and not give up too much, and he still ended up losing. So that is a definite uh, heavy weight when you're up uh, a decent amount and you still have to play as respectful as possible. Yeah. And it looks like Tonzo's going for a death stance with that Caulfield's Warhammer. Because, you know, Death Stance now builds out of Caulfield's Warhammer and Aegis of the Legion, and it looks really weird when you have those two items in your inventory, but it's not troll anymore, guys, I swear. Death Stance is crazy strong right now, and once Camille gets that, having the Ravenous Hydra and the Death Stance, I don't know if even Jax with Bork would be able to out-sustain that Camille damage, because you will heal off the true damage with Death Stance as well, so... Mm -hmm. Lots of healing to come out of this Camille build once the Death Stance is completed. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if that even turns into a Maw. Because... Oh, that's true. If Dilan is going to be challenged by Tonzo, he would need the Maw to stay alive a little bit more. So there is that possibility as well. Um, however, I do like your Death Stance idea a lot more. Uh, yeah, specifically Death because Death Stance of the... gives you a decent amount of MR as well, since it builds yeah. that Aegis now. It, it depends. Either way... It, yeah. It's hard to tell. It's definitely hard to tell, so I'm very interested. Uh, we actually see the stopwatch coming out as well, so multiple people on the side of Omega Game Resistance feeling like this is a good time to hold as we also see a QSS come out of uh, Minmax. Yeah, they're realizing we're getting close to the tipping point of the game here. This mm -hmm. next Baron, this next Dragon could be the tipping point, and having these one-use oh. items, the stopwatches as well as the QSSs is important, and Primer, oh, great oh. ultimatum! Yeah, and in comes the Grand Skyfall as well. That's pretty much a solo kill if you wanted to hold it. Nice little stun, but that's going to be the smite. Oh, and he, he even flash. burns the flash. That's a huge loss for the side of Primer on that fight. That is a very big loss. Losing that five-minute cooldown when you were pretty much just dead no matter what you did. Um... Don't know if it's just the heat of the moment getting to him, or he thought he could actually get away somehow. Because I don't think he had vision of Pantheon, so maybe thought he was coming into the alcove as well. But uh, definitely a rough one for Primer. And, you know, dying 1v1 or 2v1 as it were, uh, twice in a row, when before that you guys had Baron, you had the side lane pressure, has to be a big crushing blow to him at this point. Yeah, not only that, I I want to point out, we're 28 minutes in, it feels like this game should have ended at 24, and World Class Full Send have made no attempt to even come close to forcing a break in the base. Yeah. Again, this, it, at this point, it, it probably shouldn't happen, right? Because again, it, it's a little dangerous. But the big thing is, is earlier on, I feel they had a massive advantage to try and, you know, end this game much earlier. d one 6, 1, and 5, why wouldn't you try? Yeah, but they're going for the Baron, and they have the correct Aphelios Gums to really burst it down quickly this time. Your nurse trying to land some poke. We'll see who ends up with this. They're just going to back off. Oh, big teleport. Big teleport from the back line. Tonzo said, I want to try and fight this. He jumps all the way in. He is going to get stunned out. Knocked up. That's going to be the kill. Avila is picking up one, but the jump in as well. Grand entrance is there. Separates the entire fight. That's going to be the taunt coming out. Supermark goes gold. So does Azuto. Minmax picking up the kill, but that's going to be a trade right back. And that's going to be the Chakram's going fast appearance. And here oh, comes us. Primer. He says it's mine. This is it. He says, I want revenge, and that's going to be it. Nice little jump in, oh. but the satchel charge stuffs it. And that's going to be a four for one in favor of the side of world class. Oh, he's here teleport. comes the teleport. They're not done. As your name gets stunned that's out of the satchel charge, he does cleanse. He now has to run. No one else is there, but they're just going to turn right back on the Baron. And I was just talking about, you know, how do you close out a game? This is how you just fight. Yeah, and they had the Kirk to Felios guns to try and force it. Death Bomb trying to come in, but this Baron should go the way of World Class Full Send, and that fight did not look that good for them, but they made it work somehow. Oh, that was... And, and, and I think a big thing is Tonzo actually couldn't do the Hexac Ultimatum. If he was able to get the Hexac Ultimatum down, he would have gotten the kill. That's going to be a solo for that as well, and the collateral damage claims it. So very nice kill going around, but going back to that fight, I mean, multiple things felt like it went in favor of the side of Omega Gaming Resistance, and then it all fell apart. 
Yeah, once that Galio ult came in and knocked up three or four people, I was thinking that Omega was going to end up wiping this fight and turning the game around and pushing for some base damage, but Primer just kind of took over and got onto Minmax and Your Nurse and killed Minmax and forced Your Nurse into that little bit of a comical situation we saw with him trying to land as many bombs as he could, trying to take the Baron away, but just wasn't quite able to do it. And, you know, Minmax is pretty strong, but Azuto has a completed item and actually two, like, completed items and a component over with the Guardian Angel and the Runons completed to just the IE and PD of Minmax. So this uh, Aphelios is big time online right now. He definitely is. I see another jump in on Primer. Hexite Cultivate him finally goes out. And Primer just is getting nuked down, but he might be able to trade one back. No, not enough available. So Tonzo now throwing out the repel, and he's able to survive. And that's a very big hold. Mega Inferno Bomb goes out, but not going to do any damage, as that bottom tower is now going to go down. Yeah, I think that bomb should have been aimed more at the minion wave. With the Baron buff, it's not going to do a whole lot to the minions, but will help repel a push a little bit. But overall, they're just not going to push their luck down in the numbers, so... It's starting to get down to crunch time because Primer has been unable to win these side lane engagements regardless of whether or not the numbers are equal or not. Um, he's actually done a lot better in the actual team fights, so maybe we'll see him try to back off of this side lane and just try to group up and see what they can get because they do have the Leona engage power to make things happen. There are very few champions that can engage as well as Leona. So you might as well abuse the fact that you have her. Yeah, that is so true. And again, having those cloud traits means so, uh, so good and makes you so happy to see Hexacle that. Hexacle Tomatum's already back up because they have two cloud drakes of their own. Yeah, and, and Tonto says, all right, you want to do it? cool. He gets the kill in the grand He's entrance there as well. Does get the mini knockup. That's going to be it. And the taunt comes out as well. That's going to be the grand sky as well. They're throwing everything in the kitchen sink in this fight. This could be the one that they want. Primer going very, very low. Moonlight Vigil does land, but does barely any damage. That's going to be the golden golden, and oh, that's going to be the kill. Shot. They get it, and the GA is popped right now. This is a turn fight, but Azuto claims that one as well. So a big turn, two for two Jinx across pushing, the board. Though. Yeah, but look at the mid lane. That's going to be a tower going down. And remember, this is late game Ziggs. He has the Rabadons. He has the Ludens. He is easily pushing this mid lane. He can take an inhibitor tower as well. And now this is such a big change as world class full send are now scrambling to try and deal with this split pushing potential. Yeah, and you know, you just see, saw what Camille can do. She's level 18 now at just 33 minutes into the game. Has the Death Dance completed now as well. Has another Ruby Crystal, so we'll see what that turns into. Um, in my head, I'm thinking maybe a Sterax Gauge would make some sense here, but we'll see what that ends up becoming. But that stopwatch came in handy, <laughs> big time yeah. for Tonzo. Uh, and that's the power of the stopwatch. That's why that rune that gives it out for free has been nerfed over and over again is just because of how how impactful having stasis is and you don't have to build the full zonyas to get access to it anymore yeah he actually didn't go that rune he actually i believe went uh, if i'm not mistaken he actually went the uh the resolve tree so he actually bought that a while ago specifically for that trade and i have to give them credit because again we thought this game was going to be over at about 24 minutes or so and yet omega gaming resistance with tonzo kind of leading that charge they have done an immaculate job holding out for over 10 minutes and accruing that lead back 3k uh difference in favor of the side of world class full send at 34 uh, about 35 minutes is pretty much pennies and uh cents just not that impactful right now yeah we're getting to the point where people are starting to become full build so it comes down to execution and just the, the team comp. And you have the Ziggs AOE just ready to go at any time. And that is worth so much gold if you're able to put out all of that damage onto multiple members at the same time. Uh, that's worth a lot more than any gold lead you can have is a, a, a three and a half item Ziggs hitting everyone with everything. Yeah, 20 seconds on this dragon. This would be fourth dragon for the side of oh, uh, Omega Game Resistance. So Look at the Jack's uh, world flank. class. Yeah. 
This is gonna be a flank from the back line, but it was spotted out. Good flash over the wall. They're gonna find Dylan. He might get killed. No, he gets pushed back with a buster shot. That's not gonna be the kill. Solo fire with completely, but Moonlight Vigil takes out Super Mark. He goes down very, very quickly, and NDM8 is gonna get fought out, but Jax is yet to come, and there it is. The wash is there as 2 0, and the Whoa, rest of the damage. world <clears throat> might get the kill. No. World class full send have won this fight pretty handily. NDM8 might go oh, out. No, stop. there it is. That's gonna be the kill. One for two so far. Tonzo still trying to fight it out. However, he is getting routed as Zuno is there right him. now too. He might get the sun. He does pop the GA, but that's still gonna be the kill. D Lun is gonna claim his seventh Are they kill to do of the, the dragon? game. They might try it. However, the uh the jungler is there, Yasa, there to stall it out. I don't know if they wanna do this. In comes D Lun. This might be the kill that they want. Good flash out in the stun as well. Dior Nurse oh, is going to pay for that, but no, the Mega Inferno Bomb is going to claim it. That might be the kill. He gets the trade, and Minmax might be able to pick it up, but no, Collateral Damage is able to claim the Delayed Ace, and that is going to be going to seven dragons, ladies and gentlemen. We have a game on our hands. Yeah, and Minmax actually went a Bloodthirster there. Um, I kind of feel like he needs more crit chance, because it just seemed like the Tristana was not really doing a whole lot of damage there. I think this is going to be World Class's third Baron unless Supermark can steal it. Yeah, this could be a potential steal. However, again, Supermark, Jack, uh, uh, sorry, Pantheon, late game just doesn't do as much. He did go the crit build, but he had to build a Oh, he's ulting him, so, him, but it's too yeah, late. He's going to ult him, but he is possibly going to go down. Yes, there comes the Grand Entrance as well, oh, but he just no. gets bursted right out. He just baited his support. Cleave is now the next one on the firing line, and that's a free double kill. Going over to Azuto, and just as I thought we had a game in our hands, it is stolen away. 32 to 18, second Baron on the field. Well, as a Zareth player, I'm sure you understand that the game <laughs> is never over until it's completely over when there's a Zareth or a Ziggs in a game, because the ability for them to just use the Mega Inferno Bomb, which is on a 36 second cooldown right now, by the way, to just clear out side lanes and prevent people from pushing is insanity as well as being able to wave clear. So Ziggs can wave clear two lanes at once, essentially. And Camille has the other one. So all Tristana and Pantheon and Galio need to do is just not die. So, you know, they've had a rough time of not dying so far in these <laughs> fights, but overall, you know, they're still in it. Despite what the gold lead tells you, just the fact that they have a Ziggs and they have someone that can effectively side lane means quite a bit. Yeah, we actually see a little jump out as Primer gets jumped on a little bit more. Tower might fall here very shortly as the rest of World Class Full Send are moving towards that top lane. Gonna take it down as quickly as possible. And DMA is able Whoa, to get away. Very nice played. stun. But the bombs are there to zone everyone out. That's gonna be a trade back. Oh, Primer took one bouncing bomb to the face and immediately has to back. Yeah, and you see how much damage Ziggs does to even these Baron up minions. Look, that's just a satchel charge. At about half health, that cannon minion. So Ziggs is at this point where he's just very strong. Has Leon. Oh! oh. Supermark needs some MR, I think. Yeah, you know who else is strong is that Syndra sitting at 8, 2, and 8. Also going the exact same build. So both mid laners finishing up their itemization as the mid tower or the top lane tower is broken. The chakra is flying so fast. Cleans out that inhibitor in less than 30 seconds. And that's going to be the trade oh, as the flash and is there. That's going to be the Hexag ultimatum. They get the kill. Azuno is down. That's going to be the shutdown as well. Going over on the side of Tonzo. And they clean up house. That's going to be three kills so far as Primer is doing his best to try and help out his team. But he only gets one. And that's going to be a four for one for the side of Omega Game Resistance with 40 second dead timers. This is huge for the side of Omega Game Resistance. That was a fantastic hookshot flash from Tonzo to lock up Azuto, get him in the Hextech ultimatum to combo that with the Mega Inferno Bomb and the Hero's Entrance. There was no way Azuto was living through that. His GA is three quarters of the way back up, though, so they'll have to figure out how to do it again if they can't end here. But they're pushing in for the base. Yeah, um... The only problem is, again, Midmax doesn't actually have a whole lot of attack speed, so the minion wave is barely getting pushed up. They're going to have about 10 seconds to beat down. I don't know if they can actually get this entire kill. They're oh, going to get the Hexic Ultimatum once again. They might actually stagger the deaths. They get it. They get him. He goes down a delayed ace. Means a free inhibitor. And they have traded it back in one of the most unlikely fashions. 40 minutes in the game. And the inhibitors finally go down. Man, these two teams. The first series we saw in the regular season was explosive. And these two teams just keep finding ways to claw back into into these games. 
Now, obviously, game one was a different story, but when the team comps are equal, these two teams deliver. Mm-hmm. Like, all, every game we've seen of them has been just craziness. Yeah, I have to agree. We're looking at the itemization. Actually, Ziggs is actually at a faster build point than Dillon right now. You actually see the Haunting guy, uh, not the Haunting, the Leandris plus the Morello. Plus the Ludens and Rabadon. So he's actually working on that Void Staff right now. Whereas Dillon is still sitting behind, still trying to get the Leandris finish, only sitting on a Haunting guys and Blasting one. So uh, about half an item behind. This is so big for the side of Omega Gaming Resistance. Yeah, plus they have Tonzo to answer the Super Minions, who does like a ton of true damage to him. So Tonzo has no problem clearing out these Super Minions whatsoever. And he has Teleport available for this Dragon fight. And now late, this late in the game, when you're grouping around an objective, you have to be so cognizant of where Ziggs is at, because he can just do so much AoE and burst you out without you even knowing what hit you. Yeah, but there's no Teleport spot actually right now for Tonzo to come in. So this is going to be a 4v5 going out in favor of the side of they get out, though. he's going towards the mid lane and look at the health bars actually the health bars are actually extremely Tons low oh mid. big ultimate dylan might be out of the fight right now he has to run away that's mega inferno bomb Tonzo's running might... down mid he's pushing in yeah he's pushing in right now this is a forced decision from the side of world class the game. The dance. oh this this is so big right now and they split the decision they get it Dragon and Elder is going to potentially go in favor of the side of uh, Omega Game Resistance, and they have fought tooth and nail to come back to where they are now. Yeah, now they have 30% ult CDR, but not only that, they have that free movement oh. speed, and now Tonzo's beating up Primer. Primer, you chose the wrong fight, my friend. Get it, just oh, no! Mega Inferno Bomb deletes him. Super Mike jumps into the back lane. That's two dead again. He is now getting zoned out, but on the bottom side, we see the fight continue. Super Tom's Mike goes into the GA form. He comes back, revives, and that's going to be the jump right back in Cleave, keeping his jungler alive. And the root comes out. Tonzo now having to run away as well. Cleave trying to make his way back. And a clean two kills once again, but Super Minions cleaning up in the base of Omega Gaming Resistance. Yeah, I Minmax mean, should be able to clear those up, no issue. I'm surprised your nurse got out of that situation, was uh, fighting off on the side there. But overall, Omega's pulling it back, and this is crazy. I don't think the gold matters now. We're at full builds, it doesn't matter. I think once you hit that 70k total gold point, everyone should be full build or pretty close to approaching it. But uh, Tonzo is just having the game of his life right now. Just really <laughs> popping off on this Camille, making everything happen. And now with the the Cloud Soul granting the extra movement speed, has an extra little tool in his uh in his bat belt, you know, if you're Batman, to uh be able to just fly on in and lock people up. Yeah, and, and also to keep track of we have to keep track of the Guardian Angels. We actually see three on the side of Omega Gaming Resistance and uh, only two for the side of uh world class Wolfson. However, it's one GA is down on the side of Supermark, so that's two GAs to two GAs, and that's going to be the deciding factor, I believe. As we see another jump in here, teleport right in the middle of them, and they dive oh, all the way in the back line. That's wow. going to be a great entrance, lands on the multiples, multiple Wombo combos coming all the way out. And just look at the dog pile from Omega Gamer Resistance. They say, we resist your full send. We're going to send you back to where you came from. But no, Supermark actually claims the kill. They're surviving oh, actually for a very long time. They get die. the jump onto a Zudo. That might be the kill. No, he is surviving for so long. Look at the lifesteal Minmax. Not able to clean house right now. They get a two for two so far and they have to run away. That is so unfortunate and what looked like a bloody back and forth. And both teams leave with two members down. Oh, bomb. bomb might oh. kill, but it does not as Primer is able to get away from that. But it looks like Omega Gaming Resistance actually have the initiative on the inside track. However, they look they like they're going to move towards that Baron right now. And overall, such a messy fight back and forth. And we're starting to see the tankiness of all of these players. Yeah, but now Azudo has no GA available, neither does Yasaw, so if they can make that combo happen once again, because their ultimates are already almost back up once again. So Azudo really has to be as careful as possible because he could get bursted just oh! like Dylan did. That that is so trolly. Just the fact that you see a snowman impending your doom, that is the most feels bad moment ever. Yeah, you know, you think, oh maybe God. I don't need a Zhonya's against Ziggs. I should build Banshee's Veil, like what Dylan is doing, but Zhonya's gonna <laughs> save him there. No matter what, a fantastic job by your nurse and Tonzo to pull this back. 
but I do want to draw something back to what we were talking about, you know, a GA and a Bloodthirster is great and all, but that combination, I feel like you said, doesn't work on Tristana. We actually saw Tristana hop into the backline, and he just couldn't compete, right? Azuto, life stealing off of everything, Yasa and Primer, so tanky. And Mimax doesn't have any way to cut through them. He has no Last Whisper. He has no penetration on that uh, on that Tristana pick. Yeah, um, the more and more I think about this QSS and why he needs it, you know, I feel like he probably could have just taken Cleanse and not have bought the, the QSS at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. having the exhaust is cute and all, but Cleave could have very easily have taken if they were that worried about it. Um, it's something that I've seen a lot of pros do is when they're against, you know, Sedge or Leona, they'll just take cleanse and be like, you know, I don't need a QSS. I'll just bite. I'll just take cleanse. It's fine. You know, we don't need heal anymore. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. But instead of if having, instead of this Mercurial, if Tristan had a rapid fire cannon or a storm razor or something, you know, could probably be doing a lot more damage in these fights. Well, it's not just that. Uh, usually, you choose one or the other, GA or QSS. You don't go both. There's no reason to go both. You already have one defensive mechanism, and the rest is just all up to positioning, right? He is effectively cutting his health, uh, you know, his, his oh, power potential. Oh, he went potential. almost died again to another yeah. bomb. I, I feel, though, Minmax is not outputting properly in terms of that itemization. Oh, oh big damage coming out on your nurse. All these guys are hitting late game. And I feel he needs to go back. However, he does have sustainability, so he can work his way as that uh, split pusher as well. That might be the inhibitor going down. No, that's going to be a huge shot on Tonzo. He doesn't have GA. He's going to go down. That's going to be the grand entrance landing as well. But that's a big power source down. And Primer is ready to keep going. But yeah, they Max do is still lose pushing. The inhibitor. Yeah, he's still pushing. And it looks like Omega Gaming Resistance have actually very slightly won this fight. Another Mega Inferno Bomb comes out, lands on Delon, and he is chunked to half as well. Yeah, and this is where Ziggs hits the the crazy stage. His ult right now is at 27 second cooldown. Oh my gosh. Did he just get the kill? He did! Yep. The burn from Leandri's is enough, and this is what happens when you give a living artillery uh, just unit, he's just the firepower that he wants. <laughs> he, he's, he's just, he's just lobbing ball. bombs. Yeah. This is already back up. Like, Cloud Soul plus Ziggs is insanity. He can pretty much wave clear anywhere in the map. There's the outplay button oh, though. Yeah, and there There's it is. But he's gonna get a kill. <laughs> he got it. That's a huge trade. But again, death timers are so long. Look at these death timers right now. Crucially, Yasa went down as Elder Dragon is up. This is such a big win. And the two big carry potentials right now for the side of World Class Soul Send are down. Turret goes yeah. out, trying to lay down the suppressive fire. Infernum Gun is doing so much work to force them off this fight. Azuto trying to sustain through but Tonto, oh, Tonto. he teleported in the into the base he might just end on his own this could be the series right now Sinjo is right back done does miss sun. but he gets the hectic ultimate as well he gets both the towers and he might just solo kill he gets a solo kill that is it Tonto might just solo he might pull in a second but he says no He's my team away. is Bottle ready to help out they get the elder dragon that's all he wants oh. and he gets away with the repel he might get in with the kill He's and he kill gets Azuto. the kill Look, he might get it no oh, one no. more attack is there and that's the moonlight visual to claim the kill Azuto surviving with the Bloodthirster passive as well as the Phantom Dancer. But that is the base destroyed and the health, the dead timers are still staggered. They're that pushing gives... in again as well. Oh my gosh, this game is bonkers, Guster. What are we watching? This is Omega Gaming Resistance saying, we don't want a game three. We want to end it right here. And right now the scaling on this team is ridiculous. The only downside is that Yorners didn't get the Elder buff because Leandri's ticks off of Elder buff. So if you hit someone, they just like, they, they're going to burn for a long time. So you combine those that burn and then the execute, Ziggs could single-handedly wipe a team with one well-placed Mega Inferno Bomb. I think, and I he, think he even just make Inferno <laughs> Bombs just to take blue buff. I mean, why not? It's on a 25-second cooldown. I think Satchel Charge is on a, lower cool, or on a higher cooldown. I, oh, no, not anymore, but early game it is. It's so just... Uh, one of the funnier things I think I've ever seen is if, if you have Elder Dragon, something to keep uh, track of, is actually if Baron gets the enemy team low enough, it, it one-shots them. That's the best part, is it will one-shot them. But again, like you said, the Baron buff... or Not the Baron, the Elder Dragon buff does tick, so if he lands that Mega Inferno Bomb and it hits someone across the map, you still go down. That is one yep. of the most ridiculous points, so very, very true. He can one-shot D-Lun from across the map if he lands it directly in the center, I believe. 
he has zero magic resist. Dylan is going full damage. Zero resistances, zero help. So he is going to be one squishy Syndra. Yeah. Fortunately for World Class Full Send, your nurse was not alive when the Elder was taken, so he does oh. not have it. But Dylan. Oh, that might oh, be it. And there it is. is. There it is. We are, we are holding our breath waiting for it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. That shot goes out. Moonlight oh. Vigil does land. And the root comes out, but Great, great Buster, Buster shot. shot. Primer gets blasted out of the uh, zone and towards uh, Tonzo is pushing on the bottom lane. This might be the fight, though. Remember, inhibitor is open. Nexus is open. Solar Flare misses. And ladies and gentlemen, the fight has sprung out as the fight is split. That's going to be the Elder Dragon securing the win for Omega Gaming oh Resistance. GA is falling everywhere. Health bars are depleting. Death timers are high. Azuto last man standing. It doesn't matter. And Ace and the Penguins to finish it as Omega Gaming Resistance win the greatest comeback I think I've seen in this UML playoffs. That game was insane. And I don't know if we should have expected anything else from these two teams after what we saw from them in the regular season. <laughs> we didn't quite have a troll inhibitor respawning as the Nexus was being taken or anything like that, but this game was crazy. The lifesteal on Azuda when he had Severum and the Bloodthirster going at the same time and he pressed Q was crazy. His health bar went from like nothing to full just instantaneously in that last point. No, then, then just just everything was just going crazy even though supermark didn't end up like doing a whole lot as the pantheon just the fact that he could ult and show up somewhere was enough and the zigs pick came in clutch big time as well as the camille pick like mm -hmm. everyone from omega bared down when they needed to to stop a game three from happening it took them 51 minutes but when you have a zigs on your team that's nothing new i'm sure so and, and, and hats off to World Class Full Send for this game. They played so much better this time around than they did in game one with their team comp the way it was. They actually had that lead early on, and they just kind of got outscaled. You know, Aphelios did really well, but Aphelios doesn't hit all five champions at the same time the way a Ziggs can. Aphelios can't one-shot a wave from the, the other side of the map, so... Having a Ziggs on your team just buys you so much freedom in terms of what you were able to do because you can clear side lanes, even though he didn't really, he did it every once in a while, but that wasn't the main focus. It's just, this stuff was crazy. And, you know, going back to the beginning, as we kind of try and break down this game, because, you know, game number one was pretty straightforward. Beautiful composition, beautiful early game. This time around, uh, you know, World Class Full Send really sent it in that early game, picking up multiple kills, I think at one point, up 8-1. to one, And it felt like there was no hope, really, for the side of Omega Gaming to really come back. But I want to specifically point out a point, you know, Tonzo felt like he took it upon himself to make the call to say, okay, you know, don't fight anywhere else, just come gank for me, Pantheon, wherever I go. Yeah, and... It, it paid big time dividends. Uh, there was a couple times early on in the side lane phase, I think after that first Baron, where Tonzo wasn't quite able to win the side lane. And then Pantheon would show up and, and secure the kill, help him out, and get Tonzo to that point where Primer could no longer fight him in the side lane. And that happened in game one as well, when Supermark was the Olaf and Tonzo was Irelia, where Supermark got Tonzo going and he kind of him and your nurse really took over the game so you know if you have to name an mvp for this series i think you give it to tonzo just due to the fact that the side lanes were on complete lockdown in both games just due to the fact that he took it upon himself to play these carry champions like the and camille and really made it work I, I honestly have to agree. Again, that first game, it was him getting ahead with Supermark, you know, with the Olaf and the <clears throat> Aurelia. But this game number two, he pretty much single-handedly carried the team through that mid-game, uh, really securing those side lanes, like you said, and also finding those picks, the engages with the Galio follow-up would not have been possible if Tonzo wasn't willing to jump in, potentially sacrificing himself uh, multiple times. So, uh, like you said, Tonzo, definitely our MVP for the series and unfortunately this is where uh world class full send uh you know their playoff dream ends
And that is, you know, they played their hearts out. And that game number two, definitely a testament to that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, it, it had to be it had to be Omega that they would meet in this round. <laughs> and it had to be Omega that would take them out, man, because that that first series that we saw between these two was just absolute insanity. And this game kind of followed up on that as well. But, you know, they have nothing to kind of hang their heads about. Um, you know, they all, they all had great moments in this series where, you know, things could have worked out for them. It just, it, it just wasn't, wasn't their time. Yeah. That's but nothing to hang their heads about. Absolutely not. They were able to make it into the quarterfinals of the playoffs. So definitely a big congrats to them. But again, that is going to be Omega gaming resistance moving on to the semifinals. They'll be facing MSUC team who won 2-0 in their matchup as well against Ivy Gaming Black as we take a look at the bracket just real quick, just giving you a quick update. And so they will meet in the semifinal matchup next week to determine who goes on to the finals and who gets dropped into that third place match. Now, as we do close out the day, as that is going to be it for us here at the NLCS today here for the UML, uh, I do want to note that tomorrow we will actually be having, I believe, a double up on Games Cast. Uh, we will have uh, the Upsurge Premier League playing uh tomorrow as well that'll be 100 thieves next versus orglis to figure out who moves on to the next round uh, as well as the upsurge junior league that is going to be team world class orange versus cyk purple uh playing tomorrow as well in the playoffs so you don't want to miss that so tune in tomorrow to the upsurge gg stream now from all of us here at the analyst desk my name is orbital i was joined here by guster posey thank you so much for tuning in to watch this amazing series and have a fantastic night Something at the edge of space Calling us to fly